Yes. Okay. That's what I heard you say. Mm-hmm. Good morning there. How are you? I'm good. Eric. Nice to see you. What's going on? Oh, not much. Just this could be the last day in the uh, in the old studio here, Terry. <laughs> really? Yeah, I'll yes. see you tomorrow right here. Same bat time, same bat place. Oh, you don't seem like you have much confidence. I don't know what can make you feel that way, Terry. But uh, I don't know either. The plan is tomorrow morning to move to a new studio. Wow. That's the plan. Whoa! And regardless of when we move to the new studio, a week from Monday, we'll be live in San Francisco where there's a revolt going on amongst the listeners, Terry. <laughs> there's a revolt to keep us out because uh, we suck. And, really? Well, yeah. Well, they, they don't, don't take it personally. They don't know who we are. But oh. they, their, their assumption is if we're from Seattle, how good could we be oh. if we're from Seattle? Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like the Seahawks. That, right? That's their feeling. Hmm. How good could they be? Why, why, who, who do they think they are coming in here and taking over in San Francisco? How good could this show be if it's from Seattle? Right. And it's been there for the past so many years. Right. Well, I'm not going to go about explaining myself to them. Let them figure it out. Sure. Because the reality is, if uh, if it was anyone else coming from Seattle, they'd be right. Sure. And if I was them, I would have the same feeling. Oh, who in Seattle could be so good? <laughs> right. I'm not going to explain it. Let them figure it out. Let them revolt. Let them march in the streets for all I care. It's a team and protest. Let them riot. And uh, we'll see what happens mm. over time. They'll know soon enough. But I'm not going to explain myself at any point. Right. If, I, if, if you see me <laughs> starting to explain myself, stop me, Terry, because I'm not going to do it. Okay. No, you won't even have to stop me because I'm not going to do it. Right. I'm no. going to purposely not do it. I want them to assume we suck. I want them to assume that we're going to fall apart in the first uh, month down there and we're going to not make it. I want them to assume that. Okay. The same way they assumed it when I started <laughs> so many years ago back here. Right. I, that that is a good omen, <laughs> and I'm glad that that's the feeling. Mm-hmm. But it's insulting to this city, and we're going to show them how wrong they are. Mm-hmm. How good can they be if they're from Seattle? They snubbed their noses. I'm realizing. I'm seeing the emails. I'm getting Terry. They snubbed their noses in San Francisco at Seattle. Well, you know. they think we're a little ripoff city of them. Oh, jeez. They think we, we copy them, so how could we uh, be so good as to profess that we're going to go down there and do any damage to the other radio shows down in San Francisco mm. when we're just a cheap imitation of their whole city? Wow. That's their feeling. They're number one gay, and we just want to be number one gay, so we... All right, the, the gay stuff, I'm trying to keep oh, okay. out of this day. <laughs> right. It's not about the gay stuff right no, now. No, I know. All right? Yeah. There's plenty of time for the gay stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hit the brake. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but that is the feeling. I'm telling you, there's a revolt. There's a revolt yeah. going on amongst the listeners. It's not just the media anymore. It's not just the newspapers. So it's everybody against it's us? It's not almost? just the Bay Area newspapers. It's not just the uh, the competitive morning shows that were going off on us last week. Now it's the listeners all down there revolting. Well, watch you. <laughs> Stay back in Seattle. So that's how we feel about Portland. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> But that Mark Carney show did really well. (laughs) (laughs) Look, it's funny, honeys. Jim Carrey and Jenny McCarthy casually dressed for a dinner date in the Shishi Brentwood section of L.A. yesterday. The queen of slapstick humor wore cut-off shorts and a tank top, while the comedy king was in jeans and a T-shirt. Yep, you can go casual in Brentwood. I don't know how two people making up a couple, Cherry, trying so hard to be the funny one is uh, going to make it. Oh, that really? That has just got to be a recipe for disaster when they're both the one who likes to get the other to laugh. Right. <laughs> it's just going to be intolerable. Well, but maybe this will be different for Jim Carrey because, you know, I mean... He's always had the little woman type around him. Well, oh, yeah. My favorite. <laughs> yes, it should be everyone's favorite. Oh, jeez. Renee Zellweger is the uh, quintessential Hollywood little woman. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's who he's been with. Linked and, to, he's been linked to her in the past. And, and Holly, what's Lauren Holly. Lauren, Lauren, Lauren Holly. Holly. Yeah. A little woman type, perhaps. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I see it. So now he's uh, going a little 180-ish. Yeah. In his new dating uh, style with his new love interest, his new partner in crime. Mm-hmm. And he's going He's going more of a heavy personality, you know. Right. Throw it out there, make you laugh. Right. And they're going to try to make a go of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See what happens. Yeah, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's going to wind up choking her. <laughs> You're not that funny, bitch. Mm, you're not as funny as me. You never will be. Die! <laughs> Die! 
Yeah, try talking out of your ass. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah, Stephen knows the lines. <laughs> Try talking out of your ass. Was that the one, Stephen? Yeah, that one. That's well, what he does. Yeah, when you cover in her mouth with both fists. Whoa! Is that I wasn't it? really thinking that, but... Oh. Anyway. <laughs> but they kind of... I thought you, like, make... closing her mouth with both your hands over it, and you go, try talking out of your ass! Is no. that what you're saying? No? No. In oh. Ace Ventura, he talks... Oh, I forgot about Ace Ventura, yeah. yeah. It's been a long time, Stephen. Yeah, it's been 12 years, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. well, He's done stuff since then. <laughs> I realize that, but... But you have it memorized. I don't have it memorized. Okay. Easy. Just a couple witty lines. Uh huh. <laughs> Just remember some no, of the It wasn't big a line. It's when he bent over and he moves his butt cheeks. He's talking to <laughs> Tone Loke and Courtney and that, Cox. And that stuck with you for 12 well, years. I mean, huh? he's done that at award shows and things like that. Mm. So. You don't seem to miss any time he, uh, yeah, he so makes he the butt cheeks. He doesn't want to have sex with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh exactly. Any time he grabs his butt cheeks, he's Stephen has like got the TiVo <laughs> set. That's what he's known Him for. or the TiVo guy dance around the house. <laughs> that's what he's known for? <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Maybe that's what he's known for in your mind. <laughs> oh, the butt cheek guy. He's known for a few other things. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they're actually a cute couple. Is that right? I do, yeah. Well, they got the Terry Free Ring endorsement? Well, not that it really matters or anything. I but... think it does. I think that's a great sign. I didn't realize, if you would have told me at the beginning of this conversation that's been going on now for um, a minute and a half, that uh, <laughs> they had the Terry Free Ringing endorsement, yeah. then maybe I would have thought they uh, they had a shot. Yeah, I think she but can But it's too have... late now. Oh. Past the point of return, Terry. They have no shot and it's over. <laughs> okay. And they're going to wind up killing each other. I don't know who kills who, but one of them <laughs> kills the other. <laughs> I got my buddy on Jim Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely getting his well, ass he's by her. He, he's been he's admittedly said that he like ha has depression bouts and stuff. Yeah, so, anyone who tries to come across as always smiling, come and, across. Oh, such a great time kind of guy. Right, is deep inside just ready to jump off a bridge. Right, and he and he has talked about that. He's, he don't has, try that at home, by the way. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Because well, I know you have bridges all installed <laughs> in your homes. <laughs> Mine I had a breakdown yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So you crossed that bridge? Okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what else is going on in the world? Uh, well, David Spade and Heather Locklear supposedly have broken up. Mm -hmm. This is according to People Magazine. A source, they both wanted to be the funny one. I guess so. Heather Locklear, very funny. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, of course, uh, they're claiming that she's still going through a lot with the whole Denise Richards and... Understandable, Richards wouldn't you say? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, well, but then there was all that speculation that they were engaged and going to get married. Your, blah, 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 your BFF, your next door neighbor, your confidant yeah. takes your husband yeah. and is seen on every tabloid cover prancing around every luxurious city in the world... Yeah. And you don't think there'd be a little leftover trauma? Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. Stephen, who's your next-door neighbor? Are you aware that you have next-door neighbors in your area or what? Uh, or are they too I've... far away to even acknowledge their existence? What's the deal there? Well, I thought I met one the other day when I was talking to a guy that was mowing his lawn, but it turned out he was just mowing their lawn. <laughs> uh -huh. Didn't actually meet the new neighbors yet. but Okay, regardless, now close your eyes and imagine him on the cover of oh, every yeah. tabloid magazine mm -hmm. with your wife in every exotic city in this world. Oh, that'd be tough to deal with. Tough to deal with. Yes. Now, does his that's, wife look happy? His wife looks very happy. <laughs> I'm really. sure she is. Yeah, yeah, that's just a little footnote here. Uh, that is what Heather Locklear is dealing with. That is what she's dealing with. It's tragic. Yes. We're having fun on a date pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah, feeding each other ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and then smooching. Ooh. Tandem bikes. <laughs> feeding each other. <laughs> Tandem bikes. Feeding each other gelato in Venice. Oh, you know? right, yeah, I love right. that. Mm -hmm. Not exactly what you expected when you walked down the aisle with him a few years earlier. No. Man, this is why I don't meet the neighbors. <laughs> Laughing with the gondola guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not what you had in mind for your marriage. <laughs> a little chilly on the gondola ride. She puts on the striped shirt. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm warm now. Thanks, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you picturing that on the cover of the uh, the tabloid? The uh, the gondola shirt on your wife there, Stephen? Oh, yeah. That's nice. Shirt. It's not a great thought, is it? Well, I've never said it was a great thought. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You just don't get all tested. <laughs> just a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to give you an example of no, what Heather's feeling. I can and understand getting, what she's feeling. You're already getting so upset you want to fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even happening to you. <laughs> it's not even happening to Stephen he wants to fight. Yeah. It is pretty gut-wrenching. And you wonder, kind of you're stuff. wondering why Heather Locklear may have some leftover feelings about this. Yeah. Man. David Spade. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> poor, poor little David. <laughs> poor little David. That's what gets hurt in all this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think just the David, rebound guy. Yeah, but David knew he was the rebound guy. 
Okay. Come on. So he was just into it for rebound sex or what? Oh, I, I think he, yeah, probably, but I think, too, that he, you know, you think he's he trying just, to be... He just saw this her. as a good opportunity for some rebound sex with one of the hottest women over the course of the past 20 years. I mean, you can't say she's one of the hottest women now. No. But if you no, no. are to examine the body of work over the past 20 years, you have to put her in there. Sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You have to put Heather Locklear as one of the hottest women over the past 20 years. If I was to say who's one of the hottest women now, she doesn't make no. that list. No, no, no. You see what I'm saying? I do. But hottest women over the past two decades, she's in the top ten of that list. Easy. Yes. Yeah. I just saw a picture of her with a see-through skirt on, and she's still really hot. I'm not saying she is. <laughs> I mean, it's shocking how hot but she is she's for her age. not, I mean. But David Spade is saying, okay, in his opportunistic way, he's saying, she's uh, laughing at my jokes. <laughs> I could take away some of her pain for a couple of seconds, at least, and she'll think it'll be a lot longer, but it won't. And then during that time, I could be banging the hell out of her in my little bodied way. So uh, that's perhaps maybe what he was thinking. Yeah. Just a devious move. Well, but he's Very lying. envious. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> mm, I don't know. Heather Lock has never been on the top of my list. But, but it probably helped her, too. You know? The sex with David Spade. Sure. Because. Or just whatever the relationship was. All right, Stephen, now picture David Spade pulling your hair in an exotic <laughs> kind of lovemaking moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I still be... wearing the gondola shirt? Oh, just... <laughs> you were going. never you were... wearing no, the gondola shirt. <laughs> Am I wearing the gondola shirt in this scene, then? If you so choose, you can wear the gondola shirt. <laughs> when did you get chilly on the gondola? Uh, he's not supposed to be on the gondola. I didn't either. think so. I know he knows that, but for some reason he's just, <laughs> he's gone loopy. Or made a joke. One of the others. But your jokes are confusing. <laughs> well, maybe they're just too smart for you. It's just throwing <laughs> chaos into the whole conversation. I think I agree with the people in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. <laughs> you hate yourself? Maybe you want to write a, uh, an email. I may do that. Okay. Maybe you have been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else? What else is happening, Terry? Uh, congratulations to go out to uh, Marsha Cross from Desperate Housewives. She is pregnant at the nice age of 44. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, her husband. She's 44? She is. Yes. Her husband is Tom Mahoney, who is a stockbroker. Mm. And See, that's what it takes to make a Hollywood marriage work. You can't marry someone else in Hollywood. You gotta marry a stockbroker, some regular guy. Some regular guy who can handle all your fortune and fame. I'm sure when she uh when she married him, she was a lot less than she is now. Not that she's some major ultimate star now, but she's pretty she's pretty sizable all of a sudden in right, the right. Hollywood world. Right. She's due next April. Uh she'll be forty five when she has this child, so Russell Cross make a jump, Joe? Oh, oh. Anyway. okay. Uh, <laughs> warm it up. And it's her first child. Is that right? For, yeah. First child at 44? Uh-huh. Can yeah, you 44. say Down syndrome? Oh, I'm sorry. Whoa! Whoa. I don't know. I just, I'm just a little concerned. But yes, sure high risk. Definitely high there's risk. There's a lot of testing to uh, yes. to determine ahead of time. Right. Which Teaching your kid to drive at 61, also bad. Because uh -huh. <laughs> you can't see Jack. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Steven, want to throw a little ditty here? I'm good. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was that? Great. Fire alarm? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're doing we, that this We got morning. the email. We got an email? Yes. What did the email yeah, say? You did, actually. It, you did, Hot Shot. It said that we will be having a fire alarm, and for those... I don't that, get it. ...that, you know... <laughs> I don't get it. Mm-hmm. It affects... Yeah, yeah, Steve, thanks. Just, Thank you, Steve. Just, just Steve. so you can hear it. Just yeah, so we, everybody we, else we can hear it. We knew what was going on. Thanks a lot. Well, I wanted the listeners to hear it. Thanks for bringing the fire alarm into all the listeners' homes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, they, they forewarned us. They did? Yes. Uh, who sent it? I didn't get it. You did get it. You did. From Vernon. Oh, yeah. You just deleted it. <laughs> I'll save that as new <laughs> for later, probably. <laughs> save that as deleted. Do you want to find it and read it to us, Stephen? I will, yeah. I yes, that'd that. be nice. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. catch us all up on what's going on here? Sure, let me... Uh, let why do they always here. have these fire alarm drills during the morning show? Yeah, they think it's okay to do it during the morning yeah. show. Yeah. Why? Like it doesn't affect us at all. <laughs> I guess they think we... Important. Can... Must read. FYI. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I delete those immediately. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> And as God. I hit delete, I say, screw you. Yeah. And Rob, then you Rob wonder, Tepper and Scott Soden in the two list. So. And then you wonder why. Go ahead. Please be advised, the fire alarms will be tested tomorrow morning from 6.30 a.m. until 6.40 a.m. What this means is the actual alarm sirens' horns will be going off loudly for five minutes. So they do it during the morning show. They do it during this time because there's not a full boat of people on the on the station floor. Right. Because even if they sent out those emergency must-read FYI emails, 
ahead of time, mm -hmm. if they did it during office hours, people would be running and jumping out of windows. Right. <laughs> We don't, we don't want to disturb the nice people here, you know, during the day. I like what it says here. Don't open the door to your on-air studio. Those rooms are soundproof, and you will not hear the loudness of the test. Right. It sounds very soundproof to me. Yeah. Nice soundproof. Okay. <laughs> they just know we're not panickers. We, even if there was a fire raging at the door, we'd just be sitting here doing the show. So that's why they choose to do these fire alarms at this time. Yeah. I thought Pacey just lit up in the little producer's room. Uh -huh. hey, Sprinkler's going. that, dude. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Should we send an email back to Vernon? Yeah. <laughs> Dear Vermin. Vermin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's going to be over in about five minutes or less? Or less. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Well, let's do it when he's here. See how he likes it. Uh -huh. <laughs> the team. Proud as a peacock football. <laughs> Marlon also, Dick Ember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so weird on NBC. Merlin what about Father Olsen? Murphy? Vin Scully, oh. Joe Garagiola broadcasting live <laughs> with sports yeah. on NBC. Wow, oh, crazy. So what do you oh. wake up? Bob Costas. You have yeah. sports now. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> work. Someone get him out of hibernation, Terry. It's yes. on. No more XFL. Who do they have actually broken? Is it Al Michaels and John Madden on NBC now? <sighs> I, think I think so. Yeah. Shifted yeah. Over. yeah, I think you're right. They should have gotten some... Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Dick Hamburger and Merlin Olsen. Perfect. Yeah. Bring them back. <laughs> I'll take them. <laughs> Merlin Olsen is dead, right? Well, still, no one would know until game five. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Dick Emberg's got to be close, too, by the way. Right. He may not be. I don't Merlin know. Olsen's not dead, I don't think. He was on Little House on the Prairie. Uh, yeah, I think he died. Really? Uh -huh. Like a few years. The FTD guy? The FTD guy, gosh. Yes. <laughs> Stephen will Wikipedia it and let us know in a couple of seconds. First, he has to look through all the Little House of the Prairie little tidbits. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's still alive. Oh. Yeah, yeah, dead? Come I on. He's dead, too. Born in 1940? Mm-hmm. There's no death. <laughs> Not on the no IMDb, there. huh? Unless I spelled it wrong. Maybe there's two Merlin Olsons. Doesn't Probably look like not. it. <laughs> not many Merlins left in the world. <laughs> he was Father Murphy, right? Yeah, that's the he same guy. Big Father shot actor. Murphy. He was in Mitchell. <laughs> okay, anyway, the point is, a football back tonight. <laughs> He's in his hand. You betting it? Uh, I've already bet it, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's already bet it. And, and you? Uh, the spread was? Four, I think. The spread is four in favor of your Steelers, I'm sure. Yeah. You're defending Super Bowl champions. Where are they playing? In Pittsburgh? Yes, Heinz Field. And it's only a four-point spread? It was. I don't know what it is now. And I would think that you took... Did you bet a team or you bet the over-under? I bet a team. Okay. I'm gonna... And the over-under. I parlayed it. Oh, okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Not just make one. Wager. Not just one. My guess is that you took... Let me think here. Now I'm not sure. Well, Come on. Who's, on principle, who's, who who's manning okay. the ship? You Four. took the fish! I did. Whoa. With Dante Culpepper manning. Oh, is that who it is, really? Yes, it's this new team, Terry. I, I, he's wow. got He's got new knees. He's got new knees. He's ready to go. Good. Wouldn't I'd it like be to nice? see him be successful. Don't you think? Wouldn't, I'm sure, many a time in your travels, Terry, you wish you could have replaced your knees after a hard <laughs> day's work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those blood burns on them. Oh, right. Geez, tough. Wow. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think Dante Culpepper is going to do very well. Good. Against Charlie Bitch. Charlie Bitch. Is Charlie Bitch going to be quarterbacking tonight? He will be, oh, yes. Ah, it's over right there. <laughs> uh -huh. He's good for one game, though. I took the under as well. If he has to play a second game, it'll be a disaster. But for one game, yeah, we'll he, can, he can hold his own. First game of the year. Mm. A lot of kinks to work out. I have no <laughs> idea. I just wanted action, really. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's in Pittsburgh. It is, yes. All right. Those freaking fans. Yeah. Now, what happened to Heinz Ward? Why is he not playing? He's hurt. Well, he well, might play, but he's hurt. I mean, but like, what is healthy. hurt? Because people discovered people what? discovered during the off season that he's Asian. <laughs> he went to Japan with his mother. That's right. He did to get so, back to his roots. They convinced him he can't play football, and he started believing it. <laughs> he said, "All right, you have no business being on the field, you Asian dude. Get yeah. the hell off." Not too many. And Asians. he started believing it, so he's not going to be playing much this year. Oh, mm, damn it. that's what happened. I got it on good authority. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Asian football player in the NFL? Likely. Isn't there one? Isn't that there. it? There, there was a player on the Dallas Cowboys. I think he's still there, actually. That win? He's yeah. no longer with the team. No? He's not? New. No. 
He was uh, let go midway through last season. Was he? You call yourself a gambler and you don't have these little stats and yeah. figures and uh, little tidbits at your fingertips? Yeah. Come on. People that don't start, I'm not too worried about. Mm hmm. Well, you thought he was starting, though. I thought he was in the league. He was a middle linebacker, Terry. Oh, okay. Yes. He was good. He was a good player. Oh, yeah. When he was, when he was uh, playing, he was very good, but uh, he had uh, too many neck stingers and little oh. nagging injuries. Oh. Kind of like some of the people around this building, Terry. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, who uh, used to be a lot more solid performers than they are, but, uh, you know, going on those sales calls aren't what they used to be, and right. all the little nagging aches and pains caused them to uh, have it be tough getting through the day. But... Yeah, shin splints, walk into car toys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Stephen, obviously you understand the point, and the point is that football... Until, what, January, right? February. Oh, Terry, we're expecting oh, it to February. go till February. Really? As far as our interests are concerned, we're expecting it to go till February because February is Super Bowl 41 in Miami. Screw Detroit. Oh, jeez. A warm Super Bowl climate. Oh, Who would have thought of such a thing? Yeah. Weird. So I have you guys in the morning all about football, and then I have... We don't talk too much football. And you have uh, Miami in the under? Yes. You have the under. What's the over-under? 34 and a half, maybe? Oh, that's, that's pretty low. It's really low. 13 to 10. But I like going under when point spreads are that low. What's the reason for that low? It's that low. A friend of mine from back east has this theory... I don't know if it's a good theory, but it's a theory nonetheless. Let's here. try it. Yeah. <laughs> he takes the lowest point spread of the week every week and goes under. He takes the highest point spread of the week every week and goes over. And he says he wins 75% of the games, but everyone says that. Right. <laughs> That's why he still has his day job, right? Mm-hmm. He makes so much money. He has a college professor. <laughs> if anyone knew. All right, what's going on in the world, Terry? I heard Paris Hilton's been uh, arrested, arrested and, yeah. driving under the influence. Yes, we have audio, I think, on that, but I'm not sure. I'll have to ask Dave. Like, has she ever really driven with all her faculties? Come on. Does she have, <laughs> really, at any time in her life, Terry, all faculties working together no. as one? No. no. She's always under the influence no. of dumbness. Right. <laughs> that is a good, solid point. Mm-hmm. And, and for her to drive, actually, just, I mean, I was surprised to find her driving, period. Well, she didn't she crash into a parked car in yeah. a garage recently, she, and now she's been... Well, no, her boyfriend at the time... Oh, uh, wasn't her driving? No, 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 no. She, she crashed into somebody in a parking garage. Oh. She crashed into oh. someone in a parking garage. Come on. She was accused of not leaving her information after that, she did it. That's right. She didn't leave a note. Caught her on camera. <laughs> yeah, Caught <laughs> on tape. And then her boyfriend rammed into somebody, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now her publicist or her people have come out this morning already saying she only had one drink. Yeah. If you have one drink, you're not blowing over a .08. I don't care. Well, that's what she blew, actually. A .08? Yeah, that's what the... Well, you're not blowing a .08 on one drink. I don't care if you're if you're 30 pounds. Well, but she yeah, also... You're not blowing anything on one drink. Show me the, <laughs> the boniest Ethiopian in the world. You have one drink. They're not blowing right. a .08. But she also claims, you know, hey, didn't have anything in her stomach. You know, actually, if you show me the boniest Ethiopian in the world... <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> What's that now? Yeah, the Pooh, he's uh, the boniest Ethiopian in the world. Wow, is that you? Uh, we yeah, found him. Right here Whoa, in the studio? We have our very own. Man. The whole time, been back. Here. I knew you were the boniest uh, thirty pounder I've ever seen, but I didn't know you were in Ethiopia. I was actually born there, yes. Mm-hmm. Boy, for just the cost of a cup of coffee, we could save you. What? Wow. <laughs> he's actually Ethiopian for you. Oh, jeez, <laughs> that's his new name. I see. I see how that works. Ah. Uh, but she claims. Well, yes. and they're also claiming that she didn't have anything on her stomach. She hadn't eaten anything. I hear all that. that stuff. I know what her people so, have come out and said. They said she only had one drink and she only blew. What is is illegal because she had nothing in her stomach. And was working all day. Because look at her. Does it look like she eats? <laughs> no. We were all willing to buy that she had nothing in her stomach. And she had been working all day. She put yes. in a real hard day's work. She's a hard-working woman. She punched right. the clock right on time yesterday morning and stayed overtime. Right. You had to pull a double shift today, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> so the harder you work, the better chance you are to get drunk? Yes, that's what it sounds like. Jeez. <laughs> so I guess you'd never have to worry, Steve. That's right. <laughs> yeah, sober for life. Mm-hmm. So she blew exactly .08, Steven? Yeah. That's what the news story said, yeah, that I saw. And if you blow if you blow .08, they don't give you a little pass? No. <laughs> ah, you're cool. But if you blow .07, you're fine. 
legally, yes. Mm-hmm. Blow point zero eight. They're putting the cuffs on you and putting you in the uh, in the car. I had a friend blow point oh nine in the car. See you later. Well, point oh nine is over the limit. I thought you have to be right. over the limit. I thought if you're if you're at point zero eight, they say, all right, here's where you're at. This is your warning. It might be kind of tricky at point oh eight. Have a good yeah. day. Mm-hmm. Ty goes to the runner. Ty right. Goes to the runner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. But apparently not. Point zero eight to throw you in the car. Yep. yep. My buddy got pulled over in a parking lot by his house and says, I just live across the street. And the cop said, Oh, you almost made it. Oh, dear. No. <laughs> God, it's the worst thing. Point zero eight is like two, two and a half drinks. Yeah, probably like, yeah, maybe three. Uh huh. It's not one drink. It's not one drink. I don't care who you are. If there'd be a lot of people driving drunk if one beer gets you. That's, point a, right. that's a stupid statement that Paris Hilton's people put out that she only had one drink. Right. Come on. So what's going to happen to her now? Was she fingerprinted? Are we going to see a mugshot on... Uh, <laughs> I would love to see a mugshot. Uh, I don't know. What's that site that we have smoking gone gun. to? Yeah, smoking gun. I don't we, know. We'll have to see. Do we see and... Yeah, do we see Paris <laughs> looking like Carol Burnett or what? <laughs> Carol Burnett. Carol <laughs> Burnett, wow. Well, not only did, does she have the whole drinking thing, but, you know, remember she did the, I'm not going to have sex for a whole year. Right. She had a little girl's they club. They found, what, a used diaphragm in a car <laughs> when she was blowing .08 or what? No, oh. but apparently she, uh, she is having sex and she... She had sex with uh, Travis Barker, supposedly. Mm -hmm. she, she broke her little pledge to herself and all the other chicks like Serena Williams who joined the club. Join the club, yes. Yeah. And Travis Barker's like recently divorced, too. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. in the process of. Jesus. And he's just, ooh, tat. So how do they know she had sex with Paris Barker? Uh, with Travis Barker? Yeah. What did I say? Paris he said Barker. Paris, <laughs> Paris Barker. Barker. Not everybody she dates is named Paris. Most <laughs> right. of them. How do they know she had sex with a uh, London Barker? They they saw um, they ran people they, saw them in a Vegas club having sex. So she must no, have no, had no, sex. no 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 they ran into each other at a Vegas club and and witnesses say they were like making out on one of the VIP beds. So how do they know that they had sex with one another? Well, groping. I don't. I, it's not like confirmed that somebody oh. actually said yes. They. I'm watching them actually have sex, but that's the rumor that. That's the rumor. Neither of those two, Travis Barker or Paris Hilton, has confirmed that we've had sex with one another. Right, but okay. they were all up on it's each other. speculation. Sure. Well, you could have a pledge to be abstinent and still be all up on each other at a club in Vegas. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't pledge this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't pledge to eat any of these fingers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All right? Right or wrong? Oh, fine. However you want to pledge your, it. Your thinking is... That if you're doing stuff like that and your willingness to uh, be getting all friggy like in the club leads one to conclude that you're more than willing to take it upstairs. Absolutely. Take it outside. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I don't feel like arguing. Okay. <laughs> sure, it's not tough to close the deal with her, so they probably did. Right. right. <laughs> and Travis Barker, come on. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Steven, your thoughts? Well, she'll probably get off this little charge, and there won't be anything that comes of it. So, again, being wealthy is helpful. Did you know Wikipedia point zero eight? I didn't, actually. Would you like me to? When, it, right. when was it invented? It's all right. I can find a caller that will give me the... Actual. The blow, the, the blow down, the low down on point zero eight. Austin, you're on the air. Hey, T-Man. Yes, sir. You can be arrested for driving under the influence regardless of your blood alcohol level. So you can blow a point zero zero. And the driver and the officer can say, well, uh, you're under the influence regardless of what this thing says. It's the officer's discretion. If you act under the influence, you can be arrested for driving under the influence. Well, it's not going to really hold up very well in court, I would think, if they don't have more than just the officer's word and, and the the actual readout on the the blower or whatever you call that thing is point zero zero. But it gets you off the road. I'm sure if she blew a 2.0, it still wouldn't hold up in court because she's probably got better lawyers than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wanted to the lowdown on what an officer will typically do if he's faced with someone who blows a point zero eight. Do they let him go, or do they typically take him in? I would say they typically take him in. I'm not an officer. I don't know. All right. Thanks for the call. <laughs> uh, Brian, you're on the air. Yeah, although he started out hey, sounding you like you knew. <laughs> yes, Brian. Yeah, uh, actually, Austin was right on that. Uh, it is pretty much up to the officer's discretion on uh, whether or not they can take you in if you blow under a point oh eight or not. And an officer will make his decision based on the person that's standing in front of him, or will it be more likely that an officer will make his decision based on their particular view on what point zero eight means to them? Because I would think it would be the latter. An officer would be 
more inclined to bring someone in and put them in the squad car if they feel that point zero eight to them is over is enough to consider them over the limit. No, just just that uh, if my point. If to, the, yeah, go ahead. If the police anyway. officer feels yep. that the person is under the influence, right? All right, whatever. But my point is, I bet if you look over the files of particular officers, some are much more inclined to be always putting the .08s in the squad car, while others are the type to say, oh, .08, I'm giving you the warning. Don't do it again. You're very close. You're pushing the, the boundaries here, mm-hmm. and I'm letting you go. Yeah, I, I don't know about all yeah, that. I don't think they're, that would ever happen. They're, they're pretty strict on all that. So. Mm-hmm. I think if you're a .08, you're done. Yeah. I would yeah. guess. Okay. So, and, uh, no, just far, drive safe, as sir. Far yeah. as, <laughs> don't drink anymore. Yeah, dump that out and drive safe. <laughs> <laughs> And as far as uh, Paris only having one drink, uh, uh, alcohol metabolizes, metabolizes in your system 0.02 every hour. So she would have at least had to have four. Yes. Well, I don't know about four, but more than one. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Corey, you're out of the air. Yeah. Look, 0.083, and I got arrested in January. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds like you'd be a little 0.8 right now. Probably. Mm. <laughs> you might want to pull over then. Uh, John. Gee, man. Yes, John. Well, I was going to talk about the drinking stuff, but all those other douchebags took my question. So can I have a fantasy football question for you? <laughs> all right. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, last night we had our draft last minute. Between Trent Green, Byron Leftwich, and uh, Jake Plummer, who do you start? Trent Green, unfortunately. Trent Green. If that's the best you got, a quarterback, good luck. It's going to be a long season. You better have a nice yeah, running back. A long season. You better have gotten good receivers and good running backs. I did. I loaded it up with those. I went first with the receivers and running backs. Byron Leffridge, he could, over the course of the season, be your starter. But in week one, you got to start Trent Green. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, who, who are your running backs? Uh, Ladanian. Oh, okay. Uh, Willie Parker. And uh, who's my other guy? Uh, I don't even remember my other guy. Wow, that was a good get <laughs> then. I'm not a Willie Parker fan, <laughs> Terry. And it's not just because he pulled off this long run against the Seahawks in the Super Bowl uh-huh. that uh, may have been the backbreaker. Right. But it wasn't. The officials were the backbreaker. Uh, Travis Day. Uh <laughs> But. Mm-hmm. If you've got him on your fantasy football team, you got to realize he's one of those running backs, Terry. I know this means a lot to you. That uh, is not going to be getting the carries inside the 10-yard line. I hate those kind of running backs that are so pussy-like and fragile and so China dollish that they don't get the, the carries inside the 10. Don't give me that. Because they can't take that. Oh, he's great. Uh, outside of the 20, he runs off uh, 11-yard run here, 12-yard run there. Then they're on the 2-yard line. They're bringing the big, bruising fullback. Screw that. Sure. <laughs> we get to watch tonight. Nothing pisses me off as a fantasy football owner, Terry. <laughs> More than seeing my running back uh-huh. taken out of the game when they're in short yarded situations. I don't draft those pussies! Barry Sanders was the classic example. <sighs> Hated that. I didn't play fantasy football back then, I don't think. <laughs> you had to write stuff down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until they came up with automatic scoring right online people. Yeah, Hand again my lineup on a piece of paper. Hey, right, I don't need that. <laughs> Checking the paper to do my score the next day. If you're not going to make it convenient for me, ain't worth it. <laughs> wow, wow. Where do we go now? Everyone wants to talk about their DUIs now, Terry. <laughs> well. It's a DUI Thursday. They'll, they'll, they'll answer mm, your question. DUI. No. Jeremy, go ahead. Hey, T man. Sorry, man. I don't want to mess with your flow. I know you're talking about football, but I tell you yeah, one right. question. <laughs> a lot of flow going on in the show at all times. Yes, go ahead, what? Right. Heavy flow. Uh, my buddy of mine got pulled over. Uh, do it with a. He blew a point oh six because uh, he was swerving, reaching for his iPod. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my iPod. Dude, don't ever have that problem. But anyway, uh, yeah. When they took him back in the station, they waited a half an hour, and then they tested him again. And he blew a point oh nine. Mm, wow. Wow. Well, it takes alcohol so, a little bit of time to sink in. Yeah, so it's, it's all up to the cop. If he feels like you're too drunk to drive, even if you blow a blow a point oh one, he'll uh he'll take you in. All right. Can't so, blame the iPod. He had alcohol in his system. Yeah, but the iPod's what led him to swerve in the first place. If he would have kept his eyes on the road, then he might have just been at home and just fine. He might yeah. have. Yeah. He might have though. I'm sure you rubbed it, it in. People. I'm sure yeah. you rubbed it in by telling him that. Yeah. <laughs> You should have burned a CD, jackass. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, good morning. Yeah, how you guys doing today? What's up? Yeah, I got a good point. 
Oh, geez. Oh, well. no. <laughs> shouldn't, it be, shouldn't it be our decision field? as to whether it's a good point or not? <laughs> well, if you uh, get pulled over in the field, it's not illegal to refuse a breathalyzer test. It's a horrible point, Justin. Yeah, but yeah. if you do, what happens? You oh. take get your license taken away no, automatically no, that's, that's, for six months. That's only if you refuse it inside the station. It's only if you refuse the station breathalyzer test. You're, it's legal to refuse the field one. Mm, I don't know. You know, you just start drinking no, I'm, I going, yeah. I'm going through a DUI right now, and the time the time between the field and the station could be the most critical time of your life, you know? Wow. That could be that .01 that sobers you up. All right. Thank you, Justin. That's a good point. That it is. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he confirmed it for you. Very that. fond of his points, there. <laughs> the team. Jessica Simpson and John Mayer. It's the so-called public affair to forget. Oh! Jessica and John are officially not a love duet. The beautiful Jessica set the romance rumor straight on The View. Oh, I'm actually not dating John Mayer. Just... Word is Jessica, who's celebrating the biggest... And then the... Rosie said, you're not dating John Mayer! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thought you were! <laughs> Didn't you guys in the audience think she was? <laughs> she doesn't even ask her other compadres there up no. there. No, no. It's my all wife, the audience. My wife has already told me, Terry. Yes. That she loves Rosie on The View. Really? Yeah. She says she has so much to offer. Well, yeah. You can't help, but she's got so much personality. I mean, it's just so out there. I have a hard time uh, putting up a fight on that one, Terry. She she is with opinions, which yeah. I appreciate. She is. And the fact that she's out now, I think, is also to the benefit of the audience, as opposed to her sure. doing her show like she did in the past and afternoons, making like she's in love with Tom mm -hmm. Cruise and man. hiding away. Even though everyone knew she was gay, she never came out with it. Too. Now that she's out, mm -hmm. I think that's to the audience's best interest. Right. That here's a woman who's going to sit up there and talk about being a lesbo. <laughs> right, right. She talked about Kelly within the first five minutes of the first show. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she did. Who's her, Kelly? Her partner. Her partner. Oh, the ones who stood on the courthouse steps with a little butch haircut and Mary? Yes. Yes. Okay. That and Barbara's like, could you have together. waited at least until the second half hour? Uh -huh. And Elizabeth Hasselbeck is like, what? Oh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck is <laughs> just looking intimidated <laughs> on that show now. Yeah. She's scared of Rosie. It's very clear yeah. that she's frightened of this woman. Yeah, it is. And with good reason, because yeah. Rosie will, s will crush you in more ways than one if she has to. Yeah. Elizabeth Hasselbeck is the little mouse, and, and mm -hmm. Rosie's the big kitty. And not that she was, <laughs> not that she was very boisterous. Not that she was a huge presence last season. But at least she got a word in edgewise. Right now, it's just over for her. <laughs> What's all the fuss about? <laughs> well, it's about our new set. What do you think? <laughs> Stop! You know, Elizabeth Hasbeck at some point during the season just going to break down and say, Stop screaming at me, you fat, <laughs> stupid, lesbian bitch! <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> she makes it like she's screaming at you. Uh, oh, I know. And then Rosie forced to have an opinion about the set. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. God, leave me alone. <laughs> she's all fired up this much about the set. Imagine how she's going to get... When she actually talks about topics. What's all the fuss about? <laughs> well, it's about our new set. What do you think? Oh, the audience is scared of the cheering. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, okay. It's the best <laughs> furniture I've ever seen. God, wait till they have a cooking show. Oh, God. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? Yes. Yes, not only did we choose the color, we said we don't want it to look like someone's grandmother's living room anymore. Wow. By the way, yes. you remember the, the old set was kind of beige and kind of, I didn't enjoy it. It was. It did. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that thing's rosy. Didn't enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> nice. That's the same kind of feeling you get when you, you, I'm sure maybe there's been a moment in your life, Terry, you got a new piece of furniture or did a, a whole room all different and you had someone come over and say, oh, it looks so much better than the old stuff you had. And you're like, oh, what was wrong with the old stuff? Right. I lived in that place for seven years. I liked it. Yeah. Why, well, don't, you, why don't you say anything then? You <laughs> stupid like, fat lesbian bitch. <laughs> like someone's grandma's place. I mean, that was horrible. Man, she's ripping the old Jeez. stuff. Yeah. That's got to make them feel bad. They were... Thinking it was good stuff for seven years, ten years they were there. Mm -hmm. And here's Rosie on day one, knocking their old set. <laughs> Talking about what a disaster it was. Aren't your grandma sitting here? <laughs> well, there's obviously a new sheriff in town on The View. Yeah. Guns? And this sheriff wears a big badge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And her guns are definitely blazing. Mm -hmm. She'll be checking all the girls for drugs when they come in. <laughs> That's right. No cavity will be left unaccounted for. She says we picked the new color. I have a feeling it wasn't a we situation. 
I'm sure she went to Elizabeth Hasselbeck for her input. Yeah. So what do you think, Elizabeth? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Okay, take these home and look at them. See what you think. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I'm sending you some swatches, and I would <laughs> like you to give me your opinion, because your opinion means so much to me. <laughs> Elizabeth comes back with pink, and Rosie's like, yeah, right. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going navy blue, and you're going to like it. Right. Whoa. Okay. So uh, Rosie is already making a big impact on The View in two days' work. Wow. Your wife really likes her, huh? That's what she said. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Didn't even take her time to warm up to the situation that Rosie's on The View. She watched two days' worth of shows, and she's loving Rosie on The View. Yeah. Hmm. You know, there's a reason her show beat Oprah for a while, though. It was good. I mean, she's yeah. entertaining. People like her. All right. Yeah. Okay. If you're said, I'm, not gonna, I said, I'm not going to fight with you on it. I, I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. Just not going to actually see it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I can see it. But Got in a it. setting where there's supposed to be conversation, it's a little difficult, I would think. Yeah, this is a setting where they're supposed to share opinions. Really? Right. This is a setting where they're supposed to equally contribute to the conversation that they're having. Like our show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I set a prime example for all that. So they have some nice little banter between all, everyone. But that show, uh, this show isn't called the Rosie O'Donnell Show, Stephen. All right? That's true. Okay. <laughs> have no illusions about this show. It's a completely different element. <laughs> Anyhow, but that show is called The View. It's supposed to be right. an equal distribution of opinions. Right. Hardly the case around here, if you know what I'm saying. The burning bush has spoken. Oh, yes. Yeah, Rosie play, played that the other day. Uh -huh. <laughs> she has to borrow it. I told her she couldn't have it. <laughs> Uh, what else is going on, Terry? What else is well, happening in this world of ours? Uh, speaking of debuts and being successful, Katie Couric. Her debut was very successful. Apparently, um, Tuesday night, her uh, first time on CBS Evening News attracted 13.6 million viewers. Oh, don't give me the ratings as any kind of gauge as to whether she was successful or not. I mean, people are just tuning in on day one as a curiosity factor to see the woman hosting the nightly news. That, let's be honest, is a rare occurrence where a woman gets that kind of position. True, true, but it does help that Doesn't it is Doesn't necessarily Katie. mean it's going to, yeah, she's got a history, she's got right. a, a resume, and she's pretty popular, but right. that doesn't mean, by any stretch of the imagination, that all those people are going to stick around, that this is a ratings uh, win kind of situation. It's just a... A product of curiosity. Right. I'm already back to ABC. Are you? Well, ABC... Uh... Stephen hates her. He's not letting a woman <laughs> read him the news. I watched ABC when it was a woman, so it's not, you know, it's not because of that. I just, I didn't... When get... was ABC a woman? Katie was out of place there. When was Peter Jennings ever not doing the nightly news? Well, it was Peter Jennings, then he died, and then there was uh, Elizabeth Vargas. Oh, for a couple oh, yeah, of Elizabeth seconds, Vargas. but she wasn't there. She got pregnant, like she, women do. She was... Oh. Damn it! <laughs> She was never announced as the... Yeah, it was Elizabeth Vargas and then the guy who got injured in Iraq. But then they, then he got injured and she got pregnant, so then they got Charles Gibson. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Right, well, there wasn't the fanfare that there was for Katie Couric being oh, the Oh, because she was a co-anchor. All one, right. So didn't anyway. Count. Didn't count. Katie Couric got huge ratings in night number one. Yes. As far as heading up the anchor chair of the nightly news. Yeah. Uh, and what? Comparing the three stations, um, night, NBC's Nightly News drew 7.8 million people, and ABC's World News drew 7.6 million. And what did Katie get? 13.6. Ooh, almost double it. Yes. Doubling. What the other Nightly News audience uh, numbers were. Right. So you're right, though. It will be interesting to see. Let's see what the ratings are on a uh, week from tomorrow. Right. And then we'll know where help. we're at with Katie. Right. See if she can hold him. Uh -huh. She's See already she lost Stephen. <laughs> She's already lost Killbreath as a viewer. <laughs> She's wearing white after Labor Day. Uh -huh. oh, Her first geez. night. <laughs> Her first night was Labor Day. No, the night after Labor Day. Oh, it was Labor Day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Hold that against her for the rest of the time. I, I will. Yeah. What, what didn't you like about her, Stephen? She just, you said she's... No, it's a, it just seemed like it was, I liked her better in the, in the atmosphere of the Today Show, it seemed like. Because so there's more just, fluff, and that's the way you want it, the woman? <laughs> right, I wanted her to be a to you be don't, fluff. You don't want her, you don't feel she's worthy of giving you hardcore news? Uh, I don't think that was it. It just seemed odd mm -hmm. to have her in that role. And what do you I mean, mean she gives that? hardcore... She gives hardcore news on the Today Show. I don't think that was it. It was just, it seemed odd. Seemed Why are you different. unwilling to give a sister a chance, Stephen? That has nothing to do with the mm. fact that she's a woman, but. All right, then what does it have to do with Because she's white, and I hate white people. Because you're, <laughs> you're not telling us what it has to do with. Give me a reason why you flipped her off immediately. 
Well, I watched it, but I didn't, uh, uh, I gave you a reason. I just didn't, it seemed out of place to have her there. So. Aha, because she's a woman. Because <laughs> she's Katie Couric. Give and me I'm the used reason to her in the why she's out of place. Because I'm used because to seeing her in the woman. morning and on the Today Show, and I like her clever little banter that she used to have. Mm-hmm. And now she's all serious. and it's, a- it's all serious. It's not her personality, so we like mm-hmm. the cute little personality that she had. All right. Yeah. Call uh, me when she's doing a colonoscopy again. Maybe I'll watch <laughs> Now, see, oh, that's that entertaining. Sounds, that sounds pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. What else is going on? So it was a big win as far as the way they're spinning right. it at CBS. Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. Um, Britney- Dan Rather is rolling over in his grave. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, Britney Spears apparently is going to be having a baby girl. And according to the New York Daily News, she will be naming the girl Jalen. Jalen. Uh huh. All right, it's a nice name. It is I in guess. honor of her dad, Jamie, and her mom, Lynn, and also- Jalen. I yeah. see now. Yes, mm-hmm. obviously, Kevin Federline has a lot of influence over this child already. <laughs> right, <laughs> and also and named after her mom and her dad. Well, and also her little sister. So combining all three. Uh huh. Well, her sister was named, I'm sure, after her mom, mom and her dad. dad. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very it, nice. It's very interesting, yeah. They, I guess that's how they do it in the South. There. Uh-huh. At least in that. What's the problem with the South now, Terry? Yeah. Well, those Southerners, you know, got one living in my home. So. Steven's taking on all the women and white people, and you're taking on the South now. <laughs> what else? What just else? What else South. is happening? Oh, here's something nice. Beyonce just had her birthday, and Jay-Z was nice enough to give her a $1 million car for her uh-huh. 25th birthday. Oh, how sweet. Uh-huh. A 1959 Rolls Royce convertible. Jeez, that'd be nice. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had one. <laughs> and unfortunately, celebrity duets failed to make the top ten in the ratings. So it was on again. Uh, I guess I don't know because I don't. Is it on tonight? <laughs> I think so. I think it was on Thursdays. Oh, so its first week yeah. didn't make the top ten. Right, right. We well, can't compete with Katie. Oh, no. Can't actually compete with CSI Miami, which is reruns or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long it's going to last. Al! Tonight, 9 o'clock. Al, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, Al. Yeah, T-Man, I think the reason that Steven don't like Katie now is that she don't show them big legs like she used to. Uh-huh. <laughs> big legs. He used to like those big calves that uh, he'd see on Katie in the more comfortable couch that she used to sit on as opposed to behind the desk. Yeah, there you go. Cause on the Today Show, she was showing them big old legs with her. Uh-huh. Well, oh, she was standing on the news. Now, I was reading on the Internet that people are saying that she's really heavily Botoxed on uh, the nightly and news. Now Steven can't see him, so he don't like her no more. And she's having a hard time moving her face. She, looks <laughs> a lot, she does look different. She looks different? Yeah. And I, bigger. <laughs> and bigger? And she does look bigger, too. Yeah, that's what I thought. So you're holding the weight gain that she's apparently had against her now. I'm not holding anything against her. Well, you must be holding something against her because you're not watching it, you just said, anymore. Well, why aren't you watching it? And if I'm a CBS, I'd never watch. I would never watch the CBS Nightly News. Well, I'm an ABC guy. I've always watched that one, so. Well, I don't I watch mean, any just... Nightly News. <laughs> no, Stephen, why don't you come clean and tell the truth, Stephen? Oh, what's the truth? We know what it's all about. Mm-hmm. What, Stephen's a dickhead? More than ever before. <laughs> all right, you guys have a good day. Wow. <laughs> I guess I figured it out. Yes, you broke the code. Well done. The team. It's pretty amazing how the baby Surrey photo shoot came together. We went straight to Vanity Fair headquarters to clear up the biggest cruise rumors and for the family photos everyone wants to see. Oh, yes. Everybody's been waiting to see these Surrey cruise photos. I don't know about you, Terry, but I spent all afternoon yesterday putting together my Surrey cruise collage. Did you? Yes. Oh, goody. I'm so happy with the way it came out, too. Oh. She's probably just the most beautiful baby ever. Thank you, Lord, for finally allowing these pictures to be seen. <laughs> Hell, man. <laughs> Who cares about Surrey Cruz and her pictures? Did you even feel inspired to go on the Internet and take a look? No, and I didn't even feel inspired to go by Vanity Fair. Uh-huh. To look at them. Wow. Yeah, people care. It's really weird. I don't get it either. People care. Yeah. People need to see the pictures. Because they were so private and secretive, probably. I don't know. But it looks like a baby. There she is, little five-month-old Siri. 
The baby the world's waited to see makes her debut on the cover of October's Vanity Fair. Right. Inside, playfully biting dad's nose, Ow. getting a kiss from mom, adoring parents, and an adorable little girl. Yeah, you should see when I put that one in my collage. Yeah. Giggling, cooing, <laughs> just sweet little baby. Right. Vanity Fair's Jane Sarkin got the scoop of the century at the couple's secluded Colorado compound, oh. revealing to Extra nothing was off limits during her five-day visit with Tom and Katie. No door was closed to us. He's never done that before, and I don't think he'll ever do it again. Yeah, it's amazing how when Paramount drops you, you change your whole lifestyle. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's open. He's Ask a, me anything. Okay, I'll apologize to Brooke Shields. I'll let everyone see the, the baby. Mm-hmm. It's been a complete 180 in Tom Cruise's life. Interesting. Yeah, but he still has her imprisoned in the compound. Mm. But on the cover of The Star this week... The lead story is how Katie is devising a secret escape. I know. <laughs> behind Tom's back. Right. I, I right. know that because it was brought home from the grocery <laughs> store by my wife. She got sucked in, waiting in line. That's huh? right. <laughs> Happens to all of us. There it is on the I top know. of the one of the bags of groceries. The star. How Katie's planning the secret escape and the man who's plotting with her. (laughs) She's got a secret lover again already? If only it were true. (laughs) That'd be great entertainment. (laughs) Must be true now now that that's a real magazine instead of a newspaper. Oh, okay. Maybe it is true then. I'll have to wait for the day she feels comfortable in making. It could be like the, what was the movie, Sleeping with the Enemy? But Mm. the ring didn't flush. Yes. I knew it. That's what she got her. Gonna get her. Oh, right after they do the duet to Brown Eyed Girl. Okay, good. Uh, what else is going on, Terry? What else is happening in our world? Well, first it was uh, GM that pulled out of sponsoring Survivor because they're doing that segregation Survivor. Yeah, General thing. Motors wants no part of it. Yeah, they're like, oh, sorry, we're gone. Yes, we can't handle the segregated Tribes. Survivor. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now there's more major sponsors pulling out as well. They're dropping like flies. Oh, yeah. Pulling out everywhere. Yep. Mm-hmm. Coca-Cola. It's a pretty big name, last I checked, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Home Depot. Home and Depot was used to be a pretty big name, yes. yeah. Yeah, and uh, Campbell Soup. Campbell Soup. Mm-hmm. Telling Survivor, uh-uh, not mm-mm, a good. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, yes. <laughs> uh, so, the person, what you're basically saying is the person who came up with the idea for the segregated by race, the segregated Survivor, not exactly getting a promotion this morning? Uh, I don't think so. I see. But, you know, you got to get some people excited about the 16th season of Survivor. Right. I know that. But got to try something. And, and, and This probably wasn't the right move. Right. But, there, I mean, everything has pretty much been done. But, you know, with all these sponsors that have been pulling their spots now on Survivor, mm-hmm. and with all the notoriety it's getting because of that, with all the news little clips that you see on Survivor for the season that's coming up, I bet you it gets nice ratings. People are going to want to watch now with all the hubbub about Survivor and the <laughs> the race split, the race divided season. Mm-hmm. And then when they have that penis measuring competition, Terry, oh, that's going to be a ratings bonanza. <laughs> oh, man. They don't have to have that. <laughs> they won't be stopped. Yeah. So uh, they've lost all their sponsors. Well, oh, major they still have Cascade? Okay. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Cascade. Who do they have left? I, I, I really don't know. Oh. I mean, those guys are major, so, major. Wall-to-wall survivor with no commercial breaks. <laughs> no. Whoa. Lucky us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, John's Lemonade Stand. Yes. <laughs> John's Lemonade Stand is sponsoring? Yes. I think so. Wow. He's, he's sticking it out. Okay. <laughs> he knows he'll get something back. Yes. <laughs> so are you uh, into the idea of having a survivor that's... What each tribe is going to be? It's going to be multiple races, not yes. just black against white, right? No, no, you got black, Asian, white, and then I can other and other. I'm not sure what the fourth is. Okay, or, there yeah. is a fourth. I believe there's usually four. there's only two tribes. No, I know that, but they're going four tribes this year. Yes, and all it's, divided by race. It's black, mm-hmm. and it's uh, white, correct, and it's Asian. Yes, sir. And then it's melting pot. Could be. Mm. Not sure what the last one is. Stephen, could you find that out? Latino, maybe? Maybe. Okay. May the best race win. Is that how it goes? <laughs> yes, so. So that the end of Survivor this season, you'll be like, I knew it! I knew we were best! Yes! <laughs> Whoever that is, yeah. people are going to rejoice in the streets. I knew we could walk on a log. <laughs> <laughs> Better than anybody. God.
It is kind of silly. Run it through is. the sand as good as anyone. Right. It is kind of silly, but I may be tuning in for the first time since season one. Yeah. Not a bad idea, really. It's the best thing since the Gay Rich Project on uh, Survivor. <laughs> it's been arrested. Yeah, they show like a gay tribe. Oh. oh geez. What do you mean we can't do laundry? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, that, well. It, it should, I mean. Might as well have a gay tribe. Yeah, you might as well. You're going to go around offending the world with the, the race division idea. Well, I mean, if you're going to go to those extremes, then you might as well have a fat tribe, a skinny tribe, a gay tribe. Well, a, the the you know? advertisers want no part of this season or survivor. That's obvious. But is the public bothered by this? I don't feel any kind of public outrage. I don't feel a vibe on that. Do you feel any vibe on that? Are people saying, oh, that's outrageous. What a survivor. People don't care. Yeah, I don't think it's that serious, really. Right. It's the first I heard it. The first you, you didn't, you didn't know this, didn't. this upcoming season of Survivor, yep. they were planning the race divide? I did not. You haven't seen any of the commercials or anything? Uh, I don't watch too much CBS, so. Oh, that's right. Because no, you never I don't know. Because they have Katie Couric now. That's right. And he's out. <laughs> <laughs> but they but they are aware that it's a controversial type of thing. Right. I mean, they even state that in their commercials. You know, we've done this, we've done that, but... We've done you know, everything. everything. But and now, we can't think of anything else to do. <laughs> How about canceling it? <laughs> Still does pretty well. I guess, How's probably. that for an idea? <laughs> hey, but when you're out of ideas, just cancel it. That's what they had to do to Fear Factor. They were all done doing Fear we, Factor crap. So. We've run out of ideas. Our ratings are still good, but we are done. Yeah, go out on How top. about quitting while we're ahead? Yes. No thoughts on that, apparently. Apparently not. Jeez. But they've lost General Motors, General Motors, Coca Cola, Coke, Home Depot, and Campbell's Soup, and which Campbell's are Soup. you know all pretty much their major sponsors. They've lost all their major sponsors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So not off to the best start because I think uh, when it comes down to it, advertising dollars is kind of their interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going out of the limb. but I think they like the money, the revenue that comes in from the show. I think that's. There's something to that. Yeah, I would say so. Hmm. Sh shirtless guys racing rowboats, not really the main concern. <laughs> but when it's a white guy against an Asian guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Asian guy will win. Uh -huh. Did you find out what the fourth tribe is? It is Latino. Is it? Mm -hmm. All right. The Latino tribe? That's is that right. what they're calling it? I don't know what they're calling the it, but in the news story I found it Hispanic says Latino. Hispanic tribe? What? What are they calling it? Got to be very careful here. I know. Be everything they do. Got to be very careful. Well, according to the Associated Press, it says blacks, Asians, Latinos, and whites. Uh-huh. All right. He fired up, Terry. Do you want to see how your people do? Um, Who are your people, by the way? <laughs> um, all minorities. Uh -huh. um, you know, so I... You're rooting against... <laughs> you're rooting for everyone but the white tribe. <laughs> right. Yeah, go down, white. You white folks. <laughs> Hope you all drown. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was raised by the white folks, so I know what it's like. Oh, dear. Um, no, I... You know what? <laughs> Survivor for me. <laughs> What's it like? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know either. We'll have to let's make our own base. Right. It turned out okay. I yeah. did. Not okay, so... Joking. Is there any thought I, that you may tune in for this or no? No. I, I'm not I a big, I might not. I'm not a big yeah, Survivor too. fan. I never have. That's what I'm and saying. They may have lost all their sponsors, but I'm thinking that because of these news stories and because, hey, when have we last talked about Survivor? Yeah, it's been... Oh. Not for a long time. People may watch this now all of a sudden. You may be surprised that the ratings are going to be bigger than they were the past few seasons, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see how fast Campbell Soup comes running back. <laughs> hmm... I mean, I see why they did it. Their point was that, the, you know, people complain there's not enough minorities on the show. So they said, okay, fine. We'll make it all minorities then. You know, I mean, majority of it. 75% are minorities. Yeah, but you didn't have to pit, pit them against each other. Yeah, well, that's... That, yeah, that blatant really. race wars. <laughs> Sign of things to come. Armageddon. It's here. 1-866-663-T-MAN. What do you think about the race wars on CBS? 1-866-663-T-MAN. <laughs> Ron is yeah, on the yeah. line. Yes, Ron. I wanted to say that as a black person, there's no way a black person is going to win this because 80% of the events are swimming, and we're not going to swim. It's all about the water. And, and I'm black, so I'm just telling you how it is. So you're man. not very adept at the breaststroke is what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. We can't, we're not good swimmers. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's no way that a black person, this, is, this isn't going to work out. Mm. So I won't be tuning in. You don't see, see many black people on the... Uh, Top gold medal little stand there for the individual medley in no. the Olympics, Terry? No, you don't. Mm. Not exactly. All right. I saw, that's all the comments I had to you, man. I just wanted to throw that in. All right, thank you, sir. 
Thank you All very right. much. So it's a racially biased contest to begin with. They are surrounded by water. Yeah, pretty and much. A, a lot women. of these, a lot of these elimination or whatever they call them events Challenge. involve. Yeah, a lot of the challenges involve water. Yes. People are going to be complaining. I'm sure there's five black people that can swim. I'm sure. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm sure they'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Well, they probably know about it before they get on the show, too. <laughs> yeah, you think? No, they get flown over and all of a sudden, what? We're going no, on No, 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 I, I don't do water. There's way Come too much on. water here. You, yeah. did, you did not show me the water in the brochure. <laughs> right. I mean, you did say an island, but I had no idea there'd be this much water. <laughs> Bernicia, you're on the air. <laughs> Bernicia. Bernicia, yes. Bernicia? Hi, y'all. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you for calling. What can we do yeah. for you? Yes. Go ahead, Bernicia. Hello. Hi. Hi. What can we do for you? Well, I'm trying to figure out what's the big deal about this race thing. I find I don't I think find it's it that big that. a deal, but every sponsor the that's sponsor ever uh, been a part of Survivor is bailing. They're running for the hills. They want no part of it. Well, it don't make no sense. Why ain't they proud of it? It ain't. It, it's not a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I think more people are going to watch the show now. I think really. that you're right. I think the ratings are going to be up, but still, it's too sensitive a subject for good old American Coca-Cola to back and uh, good old uh, General Motors. They don't want people coming to them with the fact that... Uh, uh, t- uh, Tito lost to <laughs> Hung Jung Wee in the uh, <laughs> Whoa. in the Jung obstacle Wee, course huh? last night. Right, right. Well, oh, man, it's not their that, problem. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, the, the best race wins. You uh, know what I'm saying? Well, hey, you know what? what? When the best race does win on this coming season of Survivor, there may be some people that are a little rubbed the wrong way. Why didn't my race win? My race is the best, and we lost. Right. What kind of crap is that? Some people may be thinking that. Mm-hmm. I really don't think it's that big a deal. <laughs> and the race that wins may not be the best race, because is there really a best race? Come on. Aren't we all the best race? Hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, what yeah, we should be looking at the race. It's just 20 people taking part in a show. Yeah, I don't see it that way. Uh, and I don't think they're trying to present it that way. So <laughs> yeah. That's so not the case. And Mel Gibson will be advertising his new movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he loves it. Because he knows what the best race is. Oh, yeah. There's right. no doubt about that. <laughs> and it's a very white race. It is. Michelle. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. Real quick. Time is short, so am I. What? 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 Stop flashing the... How we stood have a couple of minutes, right? Go wow. ahead, Michelle. Speak. Oh, talking to me? Yes, please. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, I've watched every single year, and this will be the first one that I do not watch. Really? Why? Hmm. Well, because I think it's kind of ridiculous to, to do this. I mean, this is really stupid. But you're a huge fan of Survivor, and you think this is too silly for you to watch. Oh, yeah. I mean, is, is silly the right word that you're thinking? Or give me the word that best captures how you're feeling about why you're not watching. Uh, oh, why I'm not going to watch? Yeah, give me, the, give me the reason. If there's a word that describes the reason why you're not going to watch. Is silly? The, it's too silly or what? Yeah, it's too silly. Mm-hmm. I grew up in Eastern Washington. I'm black. I know how to swim. Yay, yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, and, uh... <laughs> Is that what it's just because she's in Eastern Washington? Clapping for someone who knows how to swim now? Is that what it's come to? Yeah. Well, well, probably knows how to drive in the snow. Yay! All right, well, we'll come back with more calls. one 866 663 man back after these words. Everyone getting a little swim instruction in the meantime? The T-Man. Drive! Yeah. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. How you doing, T-Man? Good. How are you, love? I'm all right. Okay. I just wanted to say I'm all for the survivor thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, black people already have football, basketball, and baseball all sold up. Might as well let them win Survivor, too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she's already got it. And you know it. what else? We she's need to let them the- in. She's got it in the bank, Terry. As yeah. a win for the black folks on Survivor. Yes. They will win. Oh, I have faith in them. Wow. Oh, good. <laughs> See, we're already they need pulling to hard. Let them, for our they need team. to let them in on the World Poker uh, Championship, too. All right. Well, one of the best players, probably the best player in all the world of poker, is a black man. <laughs> well, every time I watch it, I always see some old white dude winning. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's the way poker is, though. The best player doesn't always win. Actually, usually doesn't. Uh, but I say we divide poker by race now. Okay. Divide everything by race, Joe. Mm -hmm. Survivor's doing it. What? And according to your story, as I see here, yes, all the major sponsors that have backed Survivor in all the prior seasons have bailed. Mm -hmm. And it's too late for Survivor now to change the idea. It's already been shot. It's already pretty much in the can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Well, <laughs> so it starts tonight. No, it doesn't start tonight. It starts tonight. Like two weeks, I think. Oh, really? Maybe I don't know. When does it start, exactly, Stephen? Stephen? A week from tonight. A week from tonight it starts. Okay. Huh. David, you're on the air. Hello. Yeah, what's up, bud? Hey, man, you guys, you guys have to know that this race is fixed, man. It's fixed. This is not. This is not fair, I haven't even started yet, and it's fixed. <laughs> yes, uh, go ahead. Why? How is it fixed? Okay, look. Let me ask you one question. When was the last time you heard of a black person, an Asian person, or a Hispanic person getting caught in the avalanches, lost in the woods, any of that? Mm -hmm. so they don't do those things, man. So the white man has an advantage, has a leg it, up, it, it, because it, they get it, lost it, in the woods all the time. It's done. It's done. I mean, you don't hear none of those, none of those other races even on the rescue squad of anybody getting lost mm -hmm. or caught. What? Or, so if the white group wins, is there going to be a riot? It's they, over, are man. They, are the Asian people going to riot? Yes. No, they're not going to riot. Chop down trees in the streets. <laughs> they're not going to riot, man. But it's, it's, you know what they should do, man? They should have a week in, in of survival in Asia. Have a week of survival in whatever... Puerto Rico or Mexico, whatever the Hispanic family or group oh, is from. Yes. Do, do, do a week. There should be a home <laughs> turf. Uh, Make it even, man. A home turf episode for each racial group, Terry. Mm. What's well, in the Cook Islands, so that's kind of neutral ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cook Island. Who does that favor? Who's getting the Who's getting the advantage there? Mm -hmm. It's a fix, I tell you. It's all fixed, Terry. It's all a plot. <laughs> I think it's more than is just it, getting caught in an avalanche. Is it all reality right. TV? I haven't seen that part of Survivor yet. Where the snow though. comes piling down the hill on them. Yeah, in Cook Island. <laughs> Watch out for the avalanche. Right. Jeremy, go ahead. <laughs> hey, man, what's up? It's the Milkman. How are you, sir? Doing very well. Hey, i just like to point out that we have all seen this uh, race war competition a million times. You might have heard of the Olympics. It's the exact same thing as the Olympics. All right, fine. But, yeah, I understand your point. There's not too many black Germans in the Olympics. But uh, right. that's not all people from this country with them pretty much advertising that they're splitting the country down by uh, divisions of, uh, of groups of, based on race. That's, this is more of an all-encompassing just the United States kind of event. Right. That's why people are just a little bit uh, perhaps rubbed the wrong way by this idea. But I don't think people are. Mm -hmm. People are excited, and if anything, if if they're not excited, then they're just, they're just not interested altogether. Right. But I don't feel many people out there being outraged to the point where all these major sponsors had to run for the proverbial hills, Terry. Mm -hmm. But they must have some idea that when it all gets started, there's going to be some people outraged, there's going to be controversy, and they don't want to be around for it. Right. Just want you to buy their cars and eat their soup because it eats like a meal. Sometimes. Uh -huh. now, whose meal? <laughs> yeah. Depends how hungry you are. <laughs> We're not eating with a fork. Right. And uh, well, it's thick enough. Oh, of course it is. Yes. And they want you to buy their nails and right, well, was it right. one and drink their soda? Yeah. Their, their pop, which however you look at it. Well, they're. Yeah. Yes, David. Yeah. Well, they're teams of five, so the uh, Latinos and the Asians have three guys on their teams, and the uh, the African Americans and the whites just have two guys. So two guys and three women on the African American and white team. Yes. Well, they're at a major disadvantage with three women on one team, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. but the physical challenges, maybe. Yeah. Uh huh. They have like stupid little puzzles they have to solve and stuff <laughs> like that, you know. Oh, so for mental challenges, women definitely have a leg up. Because women are mentally smarter than men, Terry. Mm. Like Sudoku or whatever it is on there. But physical <laughs> challenges? <laughs> I think you'd be surprised. The ladies can be awfully strong with those as well. Standing on a, on a log for uh, 24 hours straight, Terry. <laughs> 
women have that down. <laughs> Good morning. Step it on a log. But carrying a, a barrel of kindling. <laughs> a barrel of kindling. Barrel wow, of kindling. I didn't, I didn't I, know kindling I, barrel. I really haven't watched the show. <laughs> a, ba a bale of kindling. Yeah. A bale? No. Oh. A stack? Okay. <laughs> I was like, none of us make fires. You're right. <laughs> Roger! Uh, you just need a couple pieces. I call some over for that. Yes, Roger. <laughs> yeah. Or you just turn the heat on in your house. That's right. Roger, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you doing? How are you, sir? What do you got? Oh, well, I'm the father of uh, three biracial children, and I'm having them watch this because I think that it's going to shred these myths and images that uh, people have. Um, the myths, the, the myths and images that some people are good at some things and some people are good at others and it has to be that way? Is that what you're suggesting or what? Exactly. I, it, this is going to reinforce exactly what I teach my children. and That's once you scrape away this so socioeconomic stuff, we're all just people. Now, you do have uh, ethnic differences through your culture, but that's culture. It doesn't stop your ability from being able to do anything you want to do. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so true. Well, let's hope it turns out that way. Uh, what, if it, what, if it, so what if you prepare your children to see what you're expecting that w uh, will turn out on your own on the uh, TV there, and all of a sudden, before you know it, it backfires on you? Well, I don't think it's going to backfire on me. I trust people to be what they are, and that's people. Whitey wins a swimming event. Whitey wins <laughs> And uh, <laughs> karate is won by Ron Tonsu. Full contact karate tournament go. one thing that he has to remember, <laughs> though. Staff. Don't they have a karate event every oh, week? Oh, every, every week. Beat the piss out of each other. Yeah. Mm, but right what after he, the avalanche. But what he has to remember, what Roger has to remember with Roger. the biracial children, yes. even though they're biracial, unfortunately, they're looked upon as African-American. They're, you know, they're not looked at as biracial children. Huh. Society, I, I mean, and so, uh, you know. All right. But people have to remember that it's not like five black people they picked out of a city and made them go. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, I It's know. people who actually volunteered yes. to be a ratings bonanza. Yes. Yeah, that would be something different. They captured people against their will <laughs> right. and put them on the island <laughs> and made them perform. Right. It's people who think they may be good at the show. Who probably right. ought to swim. Yeah, they went through a lot of potential <laughs> candidates to find the right people that had just <laughs> the right kind of abilities for these events. Right. Regardless of race. And, and these are people who, like, like There's actually guys... been black people on the show before. <laughs> no, come on. But really? They actually do well. <laughs> God. People who like love Survivor and, and are big fans of it too. But in the past, the black people on the show and the white people on the, on the show worked hand in hand together mm -hmm. as one, yeah. not up against each other based on race. Well, they'll, they'll combine the tribe at some point. They'll have to. And most of the bickering's done within the tribe, so they're mm -hmm. going to be fighting with each other. Uh huh. For most of it, until they combine. Okay. Wait till the first event is lost. It's only a matter of time before someone calls someone the N word. <laughs> uh, could be. We'll see. I'm sure that'll make uh, the editing process, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it'll be Jeff Probst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got it in him for sure. <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, something tells me they're going to edit it very carefully now. If they if they haven't already, they're going to be re-editing it based on the fact they've lost all their sponsors and they're desperate to get some back now. They're all going to get around, gather around the campfire and we, at the end of every show and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> yeah, going to make it real nice. Showing that they're all getting along at the end of the day. The theme song is Michael Jackson's Black or White. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else is going on in the world, Terry? What else is happening in this wacky world? Well, wacky talk world. about wackiness, as you are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, a woman uh, had to have her neighbor deliver her baby in her car because her husband was so busy watching a preseason football game. Couldn't get her to the hospital on time. Mm, that's what ambulances are for, Terry. <laughs> well. There's the phone. We're in the third quarter here. It's very close. It's on the exhibition. Right. Preseason, honey. Preseason. Come on. <laughs> Happened last Thursday to a woman. Uh, her husband was uh, off watching the Steelers preseason game against Steelers. the Carolinas. Those Panthers. friggin' sniveling Steelers fans won't even drive their wives to the hospital no. when they're in labor? No. Contractions started, you know. It was she... a Seahawk fan. It'd be perfectly within his right. But the <laughs> Steelers fans... Guys, it's, it's a married man. His wife's in labor. Yes. And he wouldn't drive her to the hospital? Right. Be and, and, yeah. So she, she got her neighbor... Uh -huh. To drive her to the hospital about halfway there, she realized the baby was on its way now. Right. So they pulled over and uh, they had to deliver the baby in the car. 
And her husband was nowhere to be found. Well, he, he was... He was to be found to watching be found. the game. <laughs> she tried to call him to tell him that the baby was coming out right there in the car, but he had the phone off the hook. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Don't bother me. Anyway, it was a... Uh, We're going to score here. I know it. <laughs> the raps are going to help us out right here. <laughs> a healthy 7-pound, 10-ounce baby girl. Paramedics got there, you know, just a few minutes later or so. Now, Everybody's you're well fine. aware of where the Seahawks begin their season this coming Sunday, Terry, right? The Seahawks kick off Sunday football at 10 a.m. <laughs> you're obviously aware of where it's going to take place, Terry? I have no idea. No idea. Jeez. You call yourself a Seattleite. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> to some extent. I know to you, some live, extent, you live in you Auburn. Know. You're from Eastern Washington. But well, you call yourself a Seattleite. Right. But uh, but see, I, I'm so overwhelmed with football crap in my life. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's all is one big blur. It is. I got well, high school on Friday. And, Terry, they're and returning. I Sunday. All right, nobody cares. They're returning. <laughs> They're returning on Sunday yeah. to the scene of the crime. To the scene of the crime? That's right. That's what it's being called. Oh. Which, which crime? To the scene of the crime. You don't even know, Stephen? Where no, I'm, I know where they're going. I'm wondering if Terry knows what crime it is. Okay. Terry looks confused. They're returning. Well, to the, they're I playing in Detroit, where. Terry. Yes. And that is the scene <laughs> of the crime. Right. The crime! <laughs> where the Lombardi trophy was taken out from under our noses! <laughs> what's being called, Terry. The scene of the crime <laughs> is where they're returning on Sunday. Wow. Mm. Okay. Just make sure you're aware of that. Okay. Well, I'm going to labor. <laughs> and I'll be there watching. There's no one's helping. Okay. So you think that was wrong of that husband to not uh, assist his wife in getting her to the hospital and uh, being a part of the baby uh, birthing process? You think? What if it wasn't preseason? Would it still be wrong? Yes. <laughs> you have dang football players who miss games or come in late. Okay, let's say it wasn't preseason and it wasn't the regular season, but it was the playoffs. Oh, then no. is, it, is it okay then? It's just wrong. Period. It's really wrong? It's really wrong. Because you know what? What? I have a baby due on January 7th. Oh, Yes, geez. and I'll we'll like be say, there, won't you? I have to say hypothetically. <laughs> that it's fourth quarter. Oh, come on. Obviously, it would be the opening round of the playoffs. Oh, really? Yeah, probably. Because January 7th is a Sunday. Uh, oh, boy. Well, what if it's overtime, Terry? You don't <laughs> expect me to have to go to the hospital then, do you? Yes. Oh, jeez. I mean, it's your second kid. You've already oh, done shit. this. You've Ray. seen it before, yeah. <laughs> I didn't really do much first time around. Yeah, I breathe, breathe, push, push, whatever. You're doing great. <laughs> Everything's wonderful. Everything looks really good. And she'll have an epidural, so she'll be fine. Mm. Oh, my God. I was in the hospital during the NFC Championship game. Wow. Oh, that's How right about that? Right. But it was your first. Right. And I don't really care all that much, probably, so. About your kid. That's, that's awful. Yeah, that's that's terrible to say. Dude. You said that out loud that's on exactly the air, Stephen. Did you realize that you did that? Mm, I, I knew it. I mean, I really knew he was. We all guy. sensed that from right. the way Stephen's handling fatherhood from the first six months. <laughs> right. That he really doesn't care at all. Poor Ben Jamin. Kind of got roped into this whole baby idea. Yeah, right. <laughs> Definitely didn't want it. So uncomfortable with him calls him Ben Jamin. <laughs> Terrible. <sighs> so, uh, Stephen Campbell Soup just pulled out of the shell because of you. Uh huh. Doesn't Campbell Soup know it's not a safe method? Rob! What's happening? Yes, Rob, you're on the air. What's going on with you guys today? Not much. What do you got? Hey, I wanted to let you guys know that um, being former uh, military, I did I had my training in uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, so, uh, did survival training and jump school and all that down there. Right. And uh, when Survivor was here in Seattle, you know, taping the show or looking for her people, uh, I put in a tape. And uh, they told me after I did my, they went in for the initial interview, and uh, after I went in for, after my second interview, uh, the, the guy told me that I was overqualified. That means uh, they weren't interested in you, Rob. They were That's what? That's a nice way of telling you, without you causing some kind of scene, that they weren't interested in you. You're, you're overqualified, <laughs> sir. Overqualified for survival. Well, it, it, it was overqualified because... <laughs> No, no, listen. And I'm sure that, that made you that feel good. And everyone loves to hear that they're overqualified for something. It's yeah. certainly a good no, way no, to no, let no, someone no. down. The, the reason... But they the didn't reason want was, you! You didn't look good on TV! Whatever reason... Whatever the reason was, they didn't want you. 
they wanted someone who hadn't had outdoor training or had had any type of outdoor survival. Oh, so you were too good at the skills they would have uh, given you on the show? Because of so, your background in the military and all the skills you've been... I don't know if it was that. I don't know if it was the outdoor training. I don't know if it was the survival training. I, I don't know what it was. The guy says, well, you know, we're, you're too overqualified. You're, we're, we're right, maybe for. maybe there's something some to sense. that. Maybe they would have had a situation on the show, if you were on it, that you would have mastered the little uh, charades they make them go through. <laughs> right. A little too well. It would have been a little too uninteresting that you were winning every competition because you were so filled with unbelievable well, levels I'm not of skill. They, See, I'm not. I'm not fooling myself. I'm, I'm not, not saying you say are. I'm being. I'm being honest. Maybe you do but, yeah, have too many outdoor though, skills. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. I wasn't trying just to. You know, too just, handsome. Just say, you know, I'm just this and that. No, I was just. They just wanted to know what kind of qualif- training I had. Mm-hmm. You know, and then he asked me if I had military training, and I told him yes. And he wanted to know where I did my training and what kind of training it was. Well, but and they I were. Don't. They've already had some old military guy on, and he did rather well. Yeah, but he was like seven. Yeah, he, and he got right. Yeah, but he did. He, look, look what happened to him. He got thrown right off because of the fact that you know. Well, I'm thinking old, the, the yeah. only season I watched the Survivor was the first one, and they had some old ass right, military Mar- guy, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy the yeah, army guy, and yeah. he made it to the final four. Yes, he did. Final three, maybe even two. He made all right, it really final four. Yeah. Hmm. So no one's overqualified at age 70. But, all right, fine. So you're overqualified. Right. What's, what's no. your point here? You just love saying no, that to the people? Point, no, the point yes. is, so what is that? Go ahead. What's your point in bringing this up? No, no, the point was is that, you know, I'm trying to say that, you know, they, they're not looking for people who are who have, like, you know, the, the, the mighty hunter or the someone who goes out and goes camping every weekend or anything. They're looking for the mediocre people that, mm, you man, know, you get them on a situation. I mean, someone like Stephen Keith. Kilbreath there. Yes. I mean, you know, without his GPS in his car, he couldn't find his way home. Oh, wow. Um, wow. You know, mm-hmm. that's what they're looking for. Somebody like, I you know, disagree with that. that wow. I don't think they are looking for, for people who don't know how to do things. Stephen disagrees with that. He, uh, his GPS was broken the other day, and he found his way. I know where I live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't have a stop for GPS. He had to stop for directions three times, but he found his way home. Yeah, I'm looking for my house. I think it's not Biggest Loser. I think they're you know they're not just going to pluck anybody in there who can't do anything athletic on the show, right? But he did say Happy Medium, so they obviously Happy Medium suggests that they have some athletic abilities. But he wants us to believe, and maybe there's something to it that he had too many skills for right. it to be interesting for people to watch him on the show, right? Which would make sense. They, yeah, they don't want John Rambo yeah, painting himself don't. in clay Absolutely. and stitching up his own arm. Right? They okay. don't. They really God. don't. Stitching up the own, <laughs> your own arm on the program would be a big ratings yeah. hit. He'd probably win, though. Steve, you're on the air. Yeah, tell, yeah. tell Jeff Probst, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, the Steve. Caller, I don't know if he realizes this is football time. We got football questions, not survivor questions. All right, what's your football oh, question? Hey, it is football, football season. It is. That means no one goes into labor until February 10th. Yeah, I like that football music. Can I get a little bit of that real fast? Yes, Last of course you can. Travis Day! All right, what do you need? What's your question? I got, uh, for my draft, I got uh, Thomas Jones and Ruben Jones. Do you think I should trade them? If you if can. Yeah, hurt? trade them for a kicking team. Maybe you'll get one. <laughs> Uh, how do, how are those guys tradable? I mean, Ruben Drones, he had a couple of years maybe with Denver that were uh, were decent enough that uh, he still has a tiny bit of value. Maybe you can get something for him, but I, I'm, I'm not seeing those as uh, big names that are going to entice people to want to trade with you. You better have something well, better than that. I hope you have good receivers. I hope you have a good quarterback. I got I got Peyton Manning, Chad Johnson, and Reggie Wayne. Oh, okay. So that's where your strength is. Obviously yeah. not in running back. And running backs really rule fantasy football. So good luck to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome chorus. Uh, can you say season over for Steve before it started? Roman Jones and Thomas. Roman Jones and Thomas Jones. Those are his best running backs. Wow. Terry, can you believe that? I can't do you have believe a, Do you have a comment on this? Oh, travesty. Maybe he has the cake guy. <laughs> Terry said the word travesty. I did. Oh, man. You have to pay me every time you say that, Terry. I have copyright. Oh, okay. Mm. Can I say sexy? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Steven, you even have better running backs than that on your fantasy football team, and you can't even find your way home. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, isn't it? <laughs> right, you found the draft. <laughs>
who, <laughs> it's where we work. Who were the Caleb Wright running backs? Uh, two or three guys. Uh, <laughs> Lamont Jordan, who was uh, an yeah, Oakland Raider. We picked him because uh, of the San Francisco situation. Hey, you don't have to justify yeah, right And uh, Lamont Jordan, not exactly blowing the doors off fantasy football, but still better than Ruben Drones and Thomas Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And, Go ahead. Uh, Julius Jones. All right, maybe. Because he's close to orange. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You're a big fan of Orange Julius. All right. See so you pick Julius Jones. Good a reasoning. <laughs> Steven, the equivalent the equivalent of having a girl in your fantasy football league. <laughs> Orange Julius. <sighs> That's crazy. You can add banana for a dollar. Uh, it seems like a lot though. It does. A dollar. It's a rip off. A dollar for a banana? <laughs> <laughs> Buy my own. <laughs> Splice it in there myself. Just bring one up with you. That's next right. Just time. take it out of your jeans pocket next time. Just say, I don't need the extra for that. I got one right That's here. Right. I thought you were happy to see me. Um, uh, Bill, you're on the air. Good morning. Oh, my gosh. Hey, yeah, the day it was and still is. They're going back to the scene of the crime. That's right. That's what people are calling it. They're returning to the scene of the crime on Sunday, Terry. Have That's no, right. I hope Big when. <laughs> I, call, I hope when Fox, who I'm assuming is broadcasting the game on Sunday, when they give you that preview of the game right before kickoff, uh -huh. they refer to the location of the game as the scene of the crime. Travis Day! But, he loves saying that. <laughs> but something that. tells me they won't, Terry. Something yeah. tells me they won't. But we know where the game's being held. We yeah. know where the game is. That's right. At the Watch sea of the crime. Got a Travis Day. Travis Day. So we're going to win, right? On Sunday? Yeah. Get better. It might be a bad start to the season. The list of the Detroit Lions. Oh, I know. Who do they have manning the ship? You mean as far as players? Yeah, anybody? No one you'd want on your fantasy football team, I'll tell you that. Really? They, Who's their QB? They cut their... Uh, their top draft pick from just two, two, three years ago. They had the number two pick in the overall NFL draft two, three years ago, Terry. They just cut them the other day. Oh, That's wow. how good they are at picking players. Charles Rogers, God. Wow. Is he even going to be picked up by anyone? I don't think he has yet. Unbelievable. Just too expensive. Mm. For what you get. Jeez. Right. Who is their quarterback this year? I know Jeff Garcia was their oh, quarterback at the Central end of last Washington's year. Central Washington's finest. Oh, yeah. John, John Kitna. Kitna. Oh, really? What a cakewalk game this is going to be. <laughs> We're finally on the right side of the John Kitna situation. <laughs> finally. <laughs> <laughs> Please be the Santa Claus we always remembered you as, throwing gifts to everyone all over the field. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a football for you, and here's a football mm -hmm. for you. <laughs> the T-Man. If you thought you couldn't make it through your morning without coffee, wait till you try tea. Tea Man is coming. Oh, yeah. Mornings on Wild 94.9. Uh -huh. I, uh, I played that for my wife this morning, by the way, Terry. Did you? Yes. <laughs> so she woke up. Yeah? She rolled over. And I hit play. If you thought you couldn't make it through your morning without coffee, wait till you try tea. Wait till you try tea. And she's like, oh, baby, I will. Man, when I first heard that, yeah. like when they first played it for me, Terry, <laughs> I could do nothing but roll my eyes. Like this, watch, watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a roll. Thank you so much. I'm a good roller, yes. You are. One of the all-time great eye rollers. Gosh. You didn't know that about me? I didn't know. Oh. I need to be at the end of that little ro eye roll. Oh, you yeah, did. That's very good point. Uh, <laughs> as I told you earlier, Terry, mm -hmm. it's not only the newspapers in San Francisco writing a lot of negative comments about Wild 94.9 deciding to take our show here from Seattle, Terry. It's not just that anymore. It's not just the competitive, the competition, the other morning shows taking shots at what they don't know. It's not just that anymore. It's now a full all-out listener revolt down there. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm getting the emails all the time. I'm getting the buzz from reporters who are telling me what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. I'm getting it all from all kinds of angles. They don't want any show from Seattle coming down there and making like we're going to take over down there. Their feeling, as it stands right now in the Bay Area, is why would we want a show from Seattle? They can't be that good if they're in Seattle. That's their take on it. This show cannot be that good if they're up there in Seattle. And if, now, if I was in their position, I'd feel the same way. Sure. Because if it was any other show, they'd be right. And
and uh, I'm not going to. Reporters are asking me for my comments on it, Terry. Mm-hmm. I'm not going out of my way to dispute it. I'm not going to make this case to try to prove ourselves before we even get going. As far as I'm concerned, they're exactly right. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm not going to explain to them why I've been in Seattle for as many years as I have been, Terry. I'm not going to go out of my way to even tell them about the opportunities uh, in New York and elsewhere that I've turned down in the past. I'm not even going to give them that. Not even let them know about that. Let them all think that uh, we suck. Let them all think that we're going to fail. Let them all think that we're some hacks up here in Seattle and be completely bewildered, completely baffled by the notion that we've been chosen upon to replace the show that was there in the number four market in the country. Let them all think that all that's the case. Let them riot in the streets. Let them have demonstrations. There may be demonstrations when we show up, Terry. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's all because of you, because you're Asian. But uh, <laughs> they don't like Asians in San Francisco. Oh, yeah, definitely not. There are none of them down there. Oh, no. You're going to be the first one they're ever going to meet. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let it all happen. I love it. Love it. They're panicking down there, of course. Mm. The management is all concerned, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And they're coming out with all defensive comments now. It's just like when, we, when I started here on Cube, Terry. The guy who made the decision, mm-hmm. I don't know if I ever talked about this, the owner at the time, who made the right decision, Terry, and I knew it all along, and I, th- I think he knew it when he first made it, but then he started second-guessing himself, mm-hmm. and then he started getting really scared because the reaction was like, why are you taking a sports guy? Why are you taking a guy who was doing nights on sports? Because that's what I was doing on KJR, Terry, as you know. You, I'm sure you know that, right? Yeah, I know oh, geez, that. Uh, nice to meet you here. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> The reaction was, what the hell are you doing taking Charlie and Ty off when they're doing the Gollywood Report? Oh, right. And everyone wants to hear their horoscope in the morning. What are you doing taking the night guy from the sports station and replacing Charlie and Ty with him? Yeah. And then he was quoted in the paper. Here I am two days before I'm about to launch on Cube 93. You've heard of it, Terry? I think so. Two days before I'm about to launch, and the owner of the station says, yeah, this is straight out of the book of don't do this. <laughs> That's an easy read. <laughs> <laughs> that's the comment he says about me and my show, Terry. That this is this is a decision that's straight out of the book of don't do this, and we're just taking a flyer to see where this goes. Uh, that's nice. <laughs> that's not what you told me. <laughs> right. That it's straight out of the book of don't do this. What does the book say now? And then you got some stories in the San Francisco paper saying, why is... Uh, Wild 94.9, taking a show from Seattle that's had some success and putting them in the morning drive position at one of the most historic stations in the country. Well, I mean, the only part of that that bothers me is that we've had some success, some success here in Seattle. Show me how you can have more success. Show me how one show can dominate a market over the time that we've been here more than we have. Show me how that's done. Show me one show that's doing that and has done that. Some success? That's how they're spinning it? That's how they're spinning it! Where do they try tea? If you thought you couldn't make it through your morning without coffee, wait till you try tea. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sure that's doing well for us down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Well, that's, that's all they're hearing about us right now is those promos. So. Right. That's good. Good. I say nothing. I will tell them nothing. Let them figure it out. This is straight out of the book of don't do this again, right? Right? <laughs> Assholes! <laughs> I don't even know who I'm talking to anymore. The reporters? Yeah. Oh. Them. Uh-huh. The listeners, which I, to my understanding, looking at the ratings, there aren't many of them anyway, right now. Mm-hmm. We got to build it up, Terry. Hmm. We're going to have to uh, create a buzz of our own down there, as only <sighs> I can do. Right? Right. Mm-hmm. But we're hacks. How could we be good if we're in Seattle? We can't be any good. <laughs> of course. It is good logic. But uh, we'll see if it actually turns out to be the case. Or could it be that one year from this very day that we're talking right now, mm-hmm. that will be the number one morning show in the Bay Area, Terry? Mm-hmm. Could that be? 
Hmm. It'll be interesting to find out. <laughs> For God, conclusion! But I say nothing. I say nothing, Terry. Let them riot. Even the listeners are writing to me saying, keep your show up in Seattle. Don't show up. <laughs> nice. I think, and I can understand this as well, they're bothered by the fact that for the most part, 90% of the time, we're going to be broadcasting out of Seattle into San Francisco. Who do we think we are? Right. Invading their airwaves and doing the show from little Seattle, the little copycat city of San Francisco. We're all Seattle, we're all San Francisco wannabes up here. There's a lot of aggression from so many angles on this situation, Terry. I really think I like this. Because <laughs> mm -hmm, that's all we are, Terry. We're just a little rip-off city of San Francisco. And now we're invading their turf to try to salvage the major, one of the major radio stations down there. How dare we? How dare we? Don't come! Stay home! Hmm. Maybe we will. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's where we're at. Yeah. That's where it's gone now. It started when the announcement was first made in San Francisco. The first ones to react were the competing morning shows. Because they were the first ones to get scared. And rightly so. There's nothing down there that's on morning radio in San Francisco that remotely, I think, is going to be any kind of threat from what I'm seeing, Terry. Mm -hmm. And I think they're aware of that more than I am. Then it was the newspapers, the Bay Area papers, questioning this move. It hasn't has gone as far as to have the management of the Wild 94.9 station saying, this is straight out of the book of don't do this. <laughs> I still have that article, by the way, <laughs> in my T-Man scrapbook. Oh. oh. Yeah, I'm a real scrapbook kind of guy, don't you know? Mm -hmm. You still have my scrapbook scissors? No, yes, I yes, I know. It really makes great shapes. Anyhow, the scallop. I want those back. And now it's gone to the actual <laughs> listeners. The listeners are revolting against us, Terry. Yeah. They don't want us to come. Stay home. Stay off our turf. And I think, as it was suggested earlier, a little bit of this may have something to do with the fact that the Niners used to be the dominant NFC team, and now they're nowhere to be found. Not that this is all, hey, we're big football fans, but this is not about your football team against ours. But there's some animosity already because we're NFC West competitors, Terry, if you want to call it that. Because I don't see any real competition between the Niners and the Seahawks these days. Obviously, the Seahawks clearly head and shoulders above anything the Niners can put out there this season and for many to come. But I won't say that to them because I don't want to entice them more than they're enticed, Terry. <laughs> or maybe I will! Who knows? I don't know. I just like the fact that they're writing and they're, they're as agitated as anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but we shouldn't take it personally. They don't know us yet, Terry. Right. When they know us, they're really going to hate us. <laughs> <laughs> we were right all along. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Should be fun. Oh, yeah. Stay home, Seattle boy! Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where it's gone. Well... I think they're riding. I, we could go live right now to San Francisco. They're riding in the streets as we speak. <laughs> they're turning over Priuses. That's what it seems Prius. like. If you thought you couldn't make it through your morning without coffee, wait till you try tea. Tea Man is coming. Mornings on Wild 94.9. Mm -hmm. First, they're... Okay. Oh, first what? I'm dying to know. Oh, oh. Trust me. One promo just worse than the, okay. than the last one. <laughs> I think you were for it. You thought what? You want to hear more? Well, first, I, I, I need to know. I hear banjo. It's all about the tea. <laughs> Who writes these great one-liners? The Tea Man Show. That's me. I'm coming. Coming to mornings on oh, Wild Medi for Now. I'm the announcer guy. Oh, Lord. The American Man. Oh, playing any Neo in the clubs there, uh, V. The Pooh? Yeah, I am, actually. You're not playing this one, though. Actually, I am. You are? Yeah, it's a little slow down, you know. A little cool down moment? That's right. 
I understand how the it fellas. works. Yes, I yeah. completely understand, huh? Anyhow, oh, wait, wait, my brow. Vinny the Pooh <laughs> sticking around a couple extra minutes here when he should actually be sorting the mail over the past, what is it, a minute and a half after nine? Oh, yeah. yeah, for the past minute and a half, he should be sorting mail, but he's sticking around here because he wants to get a good old plug in <laughs> for his club <laughs> appearance tonight so that the hot little 22 year old ladies are sure to come up to him. And stick their room keys, because they fly in from out of town for his gigs. Right. <laughs> stick their room keys in his jock. So where are you going to be appearing tonight? There, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll be at Chopsticks tonight. Chopsticks? Yeah, That's lower, right up here on Queen Anne. Yeah, like two blocks up, it's lower like, Queen Anne. Me and Karen Wild. You and Karen B. Wild? That's right. Ladies wow. night. Wow. Ladies, it's ladies night? night? That's right. Is the feeling right? It is. Oh, jeez. Do you even know what I'm talking about? I think so. Uh -huh. I don't know. Let me think about that. Uh -huh. But yeah, tonight, six to eight. Chopsticks. Six do, to do eight. Do you know the song I'm referring to? Sing it, please. Uh, ladies, no. Oh, and it, he does that. Yeah. I did it in love in San Francisco. Well, Will Kim did it a few years ago. So. Mm -hmm. oh, that's all like I know. Ten years ago. That's right. Okay. So tonight at Chopsticks, you'll be there from what time? That's a dueling piano bar. Yeah, right? that's what I was thinking too. Is that a club now? Or what? I you mean, and, you just and Karen playing pianos. <laughs> Heart and soul. <laughs> like Billy John, Nelton Joel. Here no, Billy, yeah. Billy Joel and Elton John. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, I think it is a piano, uh, like a... It's a piano been, bar, yeah. isn't it? So, I mean, tonight we're turning isn't it, it into a... is kind of a uppity bar? Well, not tonight, tonight you're turning it Thug City. That's right. Well, somewhere in between yeah, you know. Thug City oh. and... Dueling piano and bar. dueling piano bar. <laughs> Can't wait to watch him play Riding Dirty on the piano. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really comes across well on the dueling pianos. One dollar ticket. Come across! I'd be riding so. dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies free, three dollar drinks. It's going to be fun. Oh, hey. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. I'll have a wig on. And what time will you be there? <laughs> Six to eight. <laughs> I'm sure that'll fill up. You don't need a wig. <laughs> it's the world's like, biggest oh, club. That's, that's great. Here. That's yeah, Rosie's year. <laughs> so what's that? Wait, so what time are you going to be there? A club that starts at six. That's my kind of deal. What time are you well, going to be there? It's, it's, it's a pre funk. It's six what to, time are you going to be there? Six. 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 Oh, it must eight be really happening. Six to eight? That's right. That's, we, your, gl that's your gig tonight? Yeah, six to eight? It's a pre funk. It's beautiful. I love it. It's your pre funk well, spot. Yeah. So it is the dually piano situation then. It's not going to be obviously turning it out at six to eight. Well, well after that's my, work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy situation. hour. Free funk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. If you wanted uh, all your life spend happy hour with Vinny the Pooh and Karen B. Wild, uh -oh. tonight is your night. Mm. Woo! -hoo. Do it. You <laughs> may be able to get on the <laughs> dueling pianos yourself and tear it up because the Pooh and Ms. Wild. Let's the poo is going to be sitting there on top of the piano. <laughs> wild poo. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's wild, wild poo tonight at Chopsticks. Uh -oh. Can't wait. <laughs> From 6 to 8. So wow. if you show up after 8 and looking for them, forget it. Right. They've moved on to their real evening festivities. But to get the night started. That's right. You want wild poo. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like wild poo to get your night started, Terry. I know. Usually wild poo pretty much concludes your night. <laughs> well, it's tough to go uphill from there. Why not start and end with wild poo? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can always do it that way, right? Okay, so the night will come full, full circle. Start with wild poo and may, in fact, end with some wild poo. But in between, <laughs> you make it your own. Uh, but uh, six that's to eight, chopsticks. Oh, that's right. All right. Yeah. Lower Queen Anne. I understand. All right. Got it. I heard Karen Wild can play Mary Had a Little Lamb with one of her boobs. Mm -hmm. What? It'd be interesting to see it. She only needs half a boob because they're that gargantuan. Oh, Anyhow, wow. uh, oh, it would be hard for her not to hit more than one key. <laughs> <laughs> is this? Oh my god! Is this your first time ever at Chopsticks? Yes, so I've, you, I've never been there. So you don't know what to expect mm -hmm. as far as who's going to show up and do, what it's going to be like. Do two guys really duel it out on pianos? I, I don't on. know. I just know it's a dueling piano bar. That's kind of how it works, yeah. I've never they been take out one. swords and they hey, do it. That's right. You, you play American Pie. I'll play Crocodile Rock. <laughs> Mine's better. May the best man win. Anyhow, uh, good luck with that. Well, thank you. You're right. See you at six. Hey, Terry, what else is going on in the world, please? Okay, here is one of the creepiest stories that I will ever, ever, ever tell you. Wow. Okay. It's quite the buildup. It is. It's quite it's the lead-in. It's really more. If you wanted my attention. You got it! Well, good. What are you saying now? Uh, it's creepy it and morbid. Mm. Uh, it happened in Wisconsin. Oh, of course. Three guys there uh, dug up the body of a woman, a 20-year-old woman, right. after seeing her obituary picture. 
So she was really hot in the picture. Apparently so hot they had to dig her up because one of the her. guys they didn't, no, they didn't know her. They just thought she was so hot in her picture they had to dig her up. Yeah, because one of the guys who saw the picture originally. Now, is that wrong? You think? Mm. Uh, wanted to, you know, have some, do the necrophilia thing. Some yeah. love relations yeah, with, with the, the dead body. I mean, not that dead if she was just in the obituary column, Terry. Well, she had died August 27th <laughs> um, All right, so she in a was, motorcycle accident. She died in a car, in a vehicle, at a, in a moving vehicle type accident where there could have been some damaged body parts. I'm surprised they chose her. She must be really hot, Terry. Um, I actually have the picture of you her. You do? Yeah, the obituary. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you need Pasty to print it out? Um, uh, yes, I do. I can get it to him. And a pasty? On it. Oh, jeez. Whoa. You blew up my headphones. Sorry, sorry. On it. It's all excited. <laughs> yes. That like a necrophilia love. story to get him going. <laughs> anyway. if, Jessica, if Jessica Alba died, would you dig her up and screw her? No. Yes. <laughs> no means yes. Right, you may not screw her, but would you dig her up just to like keep her in your house propped up on some pillows? Or? Oh, yeah. No problem. Uh -huh. no. How long has she been dead? <laughs> okay. Now you want to negotiate with you. See, that's what I'm thinking, Terry. I mean, yes, this girl was dead. But if she had only died like a day or two well, they... earlier, it's kind of like she's just taking a nap. <laughs> Whoa! Gosh! The body's anyway. not completely cold and hardened her. She, was... she gets me, I'll wake her up. <laughs> <laughs> so three guys. Three guys dug her up. Well, yes. You this said three guys. Three, That's what you said. Three guys. Three guys. But one guy is not the one... like one crazy guy out no. there dug her up and, and saw her picture and dug her up and had no. sex with her. No. This is a... Th is a three guys. A trio of guys. Yes, a trio of decided, guys. Decided, yes, this is a great idea. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't well, one of the three guys that said, you know, um, <laughs> I hate to talk you guys out of this idea, but there wasn't one of the three guys that said that. They were all like, yeah, great idea. I got a great shovel for this. <laughs> yeah. That's they went to the cemetery. That could be the most concerning part of the story. I mean, I wouldn't be completely blown away if you said, T-Man, there was a guy in Wisconsin, saw some babe in the obituary column. He was so infatuated with her that he dug her up and wanted to have sex with her. Then I would say, okay, there's a crazy guy out there uh, everywhere you look, everywhere you turn. But for three guys mm -hmm. to get together, one of the three guys had to come up with the idea, and the other two guys had to be like, okay. We're in. I didn't know what I was going to do today, but this sounds great. <laughs> And they did. They went to the cemetery in Wisconsin to do just that, dig her up. They Unbelievable. started. Yeah. Uh, they they got some, down to the concrete vault. Did they at least light some candles to her? Uh, it doesn't say anything like that. Put some moon music on her. Oh, right. Put a little corsage, corsage on her, huh? Yeah, somewhere on her body. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about sticking her. She won't feel anything. Uh, okay. Nice. Um, nice. But, Sounds like they didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not fortunately. Not that they... Had any trouble with that if she was alive? All right. yeah. But fortunately, um, somebody she have did, anything anyway. did did spot their car in the know. cemetery, <laughs> and that's when they got uh, someone called the police on them. So. Oh, so they didn't actually have sex with her? No, no, no. I thought the concrete thing would be their barrier. I mean, they're like caskets are covered in concrete now, right? So you can't yeah. just dig people up anymore, right? Oh, right. really? When did that start? I, well, I think a while back. It's been going on for a while. They dumped concrete in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fun days are gone. Yeah. Did they yeah. do that because got, of so many crazy yeah. people out there course, digging probably. up graves, robbing graves, yes. screwing dead bodies? Yes. All those reasons. When did that start? Oh, I never heard of that. It's been going on for a while. When did it start? Uh, 15 Wikipedia. years ago. <laughs> give me, yeah, give me a rough number <laughs> of I'm years. thinking like probably 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Maybe, yeah. maybe even more. So you're saying, really? I don't remember them pouring concrete yeah. over my grandmother's bodies. I was at the cemetery. Well, they probably do it when you're gone. I mean, it's a little oh, okay. sensitive. To yeah. Hey, Bob, bring in the truck. <laughs> Lower in. Wait, we're still talking about her. Yeah. I think I heard her I move. Would have, I would have. It could be therapeutic to help pour cement wow. over to know that your grandmother is going to be okay. I don't think so. It's not therapeutic <laughs> yeah. to anybody. Uh, hey, I would have found it rather no comforting way. to help pour them, help them pour the concrete to know that no yokel is going to be digging up Grandma Sadie and having sex with her. You don't want to see it, though. I mean. No, I'm saying I do want to see it. It's part of the moving on, part of the closure process of pouring the concrete down there to know, okay, she's safe. I've uh, put my grandmother in the ground, she's passed on, and she's going to be safe. No one's going to take her beautiful jewels. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, because Dad already swiped them off her fingers. Wow. And, Some relative did, huh? Yeah. And nobody's going to, uh, going to be doing what this trio of guys did. Yeah, but you have to see with your own eyes. You can't just take someone's word for it. the picture? Now, where's the picture? Yeah, I wouldn't trust it. I want to see it. Oh, you have the picture? God, I don't want to see that. Yeah, she's pretty hot. Yeah, um, but I mean... Good. A choice. Well, she's 20, by the way. Uh -huh. She passed away. And she died in a motorcycle accident? Yes. 
Yes. Ben Roethlisberger couldn't die, but she died? Yes. <laughs> nice. nice. Where's the justice? Well. Uh-huh. Some weird people in Wisconsin, man. It's like <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer, Ed Gein. They breed them different out there. Right. <laughs> so three guys, or That's, one guy was reading the newspaper. Yeah, and saw the saw that picture. How old were the guys? 20. They were her age. Yes, they were her age. In fact, God, uh, I'm glad they weren't older. That would have been gross. <laughs> yeah, she's sick. If they fact, were 50. That'd be nasty. The guy, the the first dude, the 20 year old, uh -huh. Nicholas Grunt. I'm just wondering what 20 year olds are doing reading the obituary columns. Maybe they had this in mind before they even opened the paper. Maybe they do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've done this before and they've gotten away with it. Maybe there weren't people there to catch them. In the past times, they've done this. Why would a 20-year-old would be reading the obituaries? Who knows? I mean, the, all of those reasons could apply. Well, they if you're just... going to dick someone up to have sex with them, you're probably a weird guy that likes to read the obituaries. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that shocking. Yeah, he has a twin brother, and so that's what he did. He rounded up his twin brother and then a friend of theirs. Uh-huh. And, you And know. his twin brother nor the friend were like, mm, This is weird. No. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we just want to go and... Play a good old game of tennis today. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, neither yeah. one of them did. Better option. A lot of tennis played in Wisconsin, I'm sure, Terry. <laughs> they love it. Pasty and Steven play a lot of tennis. Maybe that's code for hot girl in the paper today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have shovel and cigarettes ready to go. Oh, yeah, he loves cigarettes. Awesome. You love cigarettes, Pasty. <laughs> loves them. You on the phone? Yeah. Brian, hold on. Love cigarettes. Um, sometimes, yeah. And you love sometimes. tennis. Yeah, I do. Wait till he combines them. Mm. He did already. I have a hard time believing. Look at the at these two men physiques. <laughs> I know that they're out there all as many times as they say playing tennis. That's not very often. Is it possible <clears throat> that you two are having sex with dead bodies as opposed to playing tennis? I suppose anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait till you get married. You have plenty of motionless sex. Wow. <laughs> no, I mean, a lot colder bodies than the ones yeah. that are in the ground. Nice. It's just over a year and you're already in the ground. I was talking their... about me, but the majority <laughs> right, of people. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. I can also probably get their mud shots, too, by the way. The guys. See what they look like? Yeah. See who's going to be screwing their bodies now? Oh, jeez. <laughs> because they're going to jail over this, I'm sure, right? Well, they are. Uh... What, do you, what do you get for this? What do you get for digging up someone's grave and attempting to have sex with them? What's the going rate on that? I don't think it proved the sex part, but... Yeah. It, but they admitted to that, obviously. Yeah. They they were charged with being party to attempted third-degree sexual assault oh, and being party to attempted misdemeanor theft. See, it was a party. See that? <laughs> it was a party. That's if a, you're digging people up, you should be charged. May I see the story? Oh, it's, a, it's a big crime. It that's is. A, that's a tough one to pull off when you meet your maker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are uh, mugshots that says here on the, are on the smoking gun, so anyone that wants to see it can go to thesmokinggun.com yep. and see the picture of the three guys from Wisconsin who saw the woman's obituary photo and then decided, wow, she's hot, let's dig her up and screw her. Gross. Maybe they need some more summer activities, <laughs> some more youth groups. In uh, Wisconsin, Terry. Maybe for a 20-year-old, you should just get a life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a job, maybe, you know. Well, you can do this after work. <laughs> God, Steven. They should get sent to prison and I let people have their way with them. The family of the deceased, by the way, is distraught over the news that their daughter's grave has been dug up. Now, what's the deal with that you said about the cement? Didn't they, did they hit cement? Or they got all the way down to the cement vault. And then what happened? And then the police Ooh, came. no jackhammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did they have a plan to get through the cement? They probably didn't know. I don't know. I'd... They probably didn't know as well. Yeah. Most people don't know. I didn't know that either. When they said, when I read it in the story about the cement vault, I was like, oh. And this happens now universally across the country? That so. you get I've buried, it, you yeah. get a cement vault? Mm -hmm. Well, how, how much of a vault? It, it covers, it goes... Well, it's just a cement, like, platform. Top. Yeah, just yeah like, but you can work around it. A topper. Well, I don't think you can work around it. Well, they yeah, dig to the other side of the cement. Yeah, yeah. It, it encases the coffin. You dig. Ah. So, they, so they not only pour cement over the top, but then they pour yeah, a layer down and around, or what? Well, it falls down and around it. Yeah, they pour it on top and it falls around it, surrounds it. Yeah. I don't know. Because the right. coffin's not yeah, right, so sense. tight. Mm -hmm. There's some space because you have to... Mm -hmm. What if they needed your DNA to prove a case or something like that? And they, they've been known to jackhammer them out. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's what you do. These are the guys? Yes. The little Walmart shovel, not getting it done, Stephen. <laughs> no. Need a jackhammer. <laughs> Looks like raisin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was him. 
That's nice. Where's he been vacationing this week? <laughs> we'll have to ask him. All right. So, where'd you go? Wisconsin, huh? He likes wrinkled things. Raisins. Uh-huh. <laughs> Weird. But you can't find her picture on the smoking gun, right? No, I don't believe you can. She has pretty hot, Terry. Yeah, but come on. All right, yeah, I'm not saying. Jeez. <laughs> I'm just saying she is pretty hot. <laughs> All right, I want to do it, T-Man. Your thoughts, please, on uh, the Wisconsin boys <laughs> who dug up or attempted to mm. dig up the grave... Of Laura Tennyson, mm -hmm. who passed away just over a week ago in a motorcycle accident. Yeah. And not starting the afterlife with the biggest, uh, most wonderful way possible. Right. <laughs> she should haunt them. Oh, I bet she will. <laughs> if there's any justice in the afterlife, yes. she should be able to convince those powers that be that she's now capable of going out and haunting these guys mm -hmm. for how long? How long is... I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to head down to Earth for a minute. Go <laughs> knock something off his bookshelf. We know where you're going, Laura, and we're, we're behind you all the way. <laughs> some business to tend to. <laughs> I'm going to throw a boulder in front of his car as he's driving. Ben, you're on the air. Good morning. Hey, what's up, T? How are you, sir? Um, They don't just use uh, cement anymore. Now they have like a polyurethane vault as well. Wow. And is that more difficult to get through, polyurethane, or what? Well, uh, I think you could easily, like, drill a hole through a uh, polyurethane as compared to the cement. And the reason they do it, the cement, like, over 10 years, it, like, deteriorates. It just starts breaking down. Mm -hmm. And that polyurethane lasts at least 100 years. Yeah, but I don't think this guy should have been as interested in her 10 years later. Right. <laughs> Hopefully by then you're not interested in her skeleton. Right. <laughs> Earthworms, not that attractive. Mm. Brian! Hi. Oh, jeez. Brian, are you there? Hi. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Hey. Someone's yeah. haunting Brian right now. <laughs> Dude, oh. big, uh, and they just put a lid on it with a backhoe, like a big concrete lid. A concrete lid. Yeah, it's just like a big tomb kind of deal. To, uh, but does it do the job to prevent uh, people like these boys in Wisconsin from doing what they were going to obviously do there? Uh, well, if they had a, you know, a chisel or something, they could have probably gone through the lid. It's chisel. only about five inches, uh, like, thick. Five inches thick. So any kind of reasonable sized chisel would have done the job. I'm sure, yeah, if they would have looked hard enough, they could have done it. A chisel and a hammer in an hour's time, they would have been through it. Gee, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well. Working on the chain gang. They obviously looked at her picture in the obituary column and realized that she was yeah. well worth it. Jeez. Luckily, we'll be able to see this on CSI Miami this year, probably. Mm-hmm. Probably. Mm. Should have waited till Halloween to do this. Ken, you're on the air. <laughs> hey. How are you? Hey. Good, how are you? Good, what's up? Well, here's my question. Cause the story is, I guess, these guys dug this girl up with, with the thought to have sex with her. Yes. Right? Okay, but they got caught when they were at the cement flap. Mm-hmm. So these kids were not only stupid enough to dig up the girl, but they actually told the police their plan was to have sex with her. They admitted to the thought that they were going to have sex with her, yes. Why Why would you... I well, how many options did they really have for reasons why they were doing what they were doing? <laughs> if you're going to dig up graves for robbery purposes, you don't choose the 20-year-old. You choose the wealthy uh, heir, the wealthy grandmother that just died if your real thought is to be a grave robber. Rob's was great for an iPod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Un unbelievable that they would actually uh, tell the police their their uh, original story, knowing that it. Was well, you're pretty much was... dead to rights on on what you, on what you were doing if you're if you're digging up the grave of the twenty year old. Yeah, what other what, stories what other excuses could they come up with? I was sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. Well, I wouldn't dig up a grave in the first place. But oh, that's good I to know. Would, if I did. <laughs> And I got I'm glad caught. you clarified I'm, that, I'm yes. I'm sure I would definitely uh, think of a different excuse. All right, than, let's uh, say you were just caught. I'm the police. I caught you by the grave. You took out the chisel, and I got you red-handed. What's your excuse? Man, I'm drunk, and we were bored. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You yeah. so mean, you're, well, then you're free to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I thought the cop would help him out. Who knows? Ryan, you're on the air. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hey, I just want to make sure that you understand what's going on here. Um it's not like a slab that they put on top so people can't dig down there. 
it's an actual vault. It goes underneath the sidewalls, and then it's capped off. So is and it... the, the reason why is to make sure that when people are decaying, that it doesn't get into our, you know, lakes and streams and stuff. So so that's the real reason that they put these cement uh, barriers up for the environment. Yeah, in fact, in fact, uh, above and beyond that, I, I found out that it's actually illegal to be buried without being embalmed. Mm-hmm. Be- uh, for this, for the same reasons, they want to make sure that you know if you're decaying, that it's not getting into our streams. And but they said that the rivers. cement breaks down after ten years, so I don't know if that's really the reason. Well, that's probably why they're using the polyurethane ones now, because that won't break down. Ten years have passed, and like, oops, not working out yeah. as, as we planned. This, this water tastes like dead guy. <laughs> 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 but it has plenty of fluoride, so we're all good. Okay. I'm sorry, I brought up this story now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you are. One eight six six. Now she's sorry. One eight six six because the water tastes like that guy. The fact that three guys wanted to have sex well, with the twenty year old girl who died, right. she didn't have a problem with. Obviously. One eight six 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 three T man is a toll free number, and Ashley is on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, Ashley. Well, like if, for me, for instance, if I was to do something that stupid, yeah, I'd be curious to see a dead body. I probably wouldn't go through with it. I probably would just be like, if I was looking to see a dead body. Mm-hmm. What about on the other end of this? Are you hot enough that if you showed up in the obituaries that anyone out there in the world would be interested in digging up your grave to do you? <laughs> That's a new I rating don't system. know about that. That's a new rating scale with a barrier, Terry. Yes. We're going to add that to the T-Man scale? It's a new rung on the T-Man rating scale. Are you hot enough that if you died today... Somebody in the world would be interested in digging up your grave and wanting to do you. Ooh, I just don't know. Sperm and egg. <laughs> you don't know. Either you are or you aren't. If you are, you know it. Well, then damn it, I am. Ow! Oh, don't you feel good in saying that? Okay, now just don't die. Okay, very good. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, Terry, you may have been right on the bullseye in saying that this qualifies as one of the creepiest stories you've ever read to us. When I go, I don't want my picture in the paper. There's so many guys going to be after your ass, Stephen. <laughs> Jeez. They better embalm your ass good. Oh, seal it up. Oh, and bomb it. Mm-hmm. I'll be doing that after the show, too. <laughs> I'm not really dead. <laughs> Just embalm me anyway. <laughs> And these guys, Terry, yes. kind of add to the creepiness of the story, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Looking like Raisin. <laughs> <laughs> look at the guy on top here. Tell me he doesn't look like uh, Raisin's brother. Oh, wow. He looks yeah, really he's freaky, kind of, He does. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is crazy. Nice hair. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, who's next here? Katie, good morning. Katie, are you there? Yes. Go ahead, Katie. I was calling just to let you know that the guy just called in and he said that it's illegal to be buried without being embalmed. And that is not true. My mom just died a couple weeks ago and they told us that you can't have a viewing unless you're embalmed. Uh, All right. Thank you so much. I don't even know. I don't know how she snuck out the quick. Elizabeth, you're up. Hi. I am actually, I listen to you guys every morning, and this guy that just, as well as the other idiots that just called in, talking about being embalmed and being buried in a tomb is actual law. There's no state law nor national law, because I'm Muslim, and we're buried directly in the ground without any chemicals, anything in our body. Mm-hmm. And personally, I mean, no, it's much easier for people to dig us up and, and do the things they do, because we do get buried directly into the ground, and we're only buried two feet under. Whoa. Only two? Only two feet under. We're buried in a white sheet. Mm-hmm. And well, so... Right. You can make your own HBO series, Two Feet Under. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the water tastes like dead Muslim guy. Oh, no, jeez. <laughs> tastes like curry. <laughs> Carrie! <laughs> 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 Carrie, you're on the air. <laughs> Go ahead, Carrie. <coughs> Are you there, Carrie? I think I might yes. call a bottle. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, good move. <laughs> what do you got? Hello? Yes, you're on. I'm just kind of wondering how they planned on doing it when they got her out anyways, when she's sewn shut not to let the embalming fluid out. When she's sewn shut? Oh, really? How is she sewn shut? 
They sew they, your vagina shut when you die? Yeah, it's a law. Yeah. They yeah, have to law. sew your orifices shut. They should shut do that when you're alive, not when you're dead. Because it come out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a, lot, a lot less kids than unwanted in this world if we did that. What? what? No, it's because your bowels relax. This is really gross. Your bowels relax when you die. Right. So everything just kind of comes out, so they sew Got it shut it. so that doesn't happen. They sew it shut so that doesn't happen underground, so you won't be tasting or, it in your water? Or, yeah. <laughs> or even even before that, like when you're... Everything is good. Oh, it's dead Muslim guy's feces. <laughs> oh, that's just great. Oh, that's <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh-huh. Aaron! These Wisconsin guys were not smart. No, Let's okay. just get that yeah. straight. Yeah. You know, people have dug up dead bodies before and had sex with them, and this wouldn't be the first guys to ever do this. No, I'm sorry not. to have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So, right. despite all your claims of how could they do this, it has been done. Yeah. There are some It's come to grips with it that they didn't get the learning curve down. <laughs> Trust me, this wouldn't be the first couple of guys or three guys this year that were about oh, to have sex with a dead body. Not even this year, Terry. <laughs> I know. It's been done cool. numerous times already in 2006 that people have had sex with dead bodies. People dig up graves. It doesn't make the news every night, no. but it happens. Aaron, go ahead. Time is short and so am I. Aaron, are you there? I guess not. Let's go to Travis. Travis. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah, Travis. Yeah, this is it. That's Travis. Yes, yeah, Travis. <laughs> I'm looking for Travis. Is Travis there? Yeah, this is Travis. Go ahead, Travis. Oh, uh, go ahead and talk. That uh, is what I'm, yeah. No, actually, I would like you to do a limbo right now. Go ahead. <laughs> limbo. <laughs> hey, well, you sound a lot different on the phone, man. Yes, well, so do you, Travis. I'm a time listener, dude. Yes. Uh, I have an interesting story for you. You know, you're talking about, you know, people uh, robbing 20-year-old, uh, you know, graves of 20-year-old people. You know, they, they're probably not going to get much out of it. Mm -hmm. Well... A couple years, a couple years ago, unfortunately, one of my best friends died, and uh, it's a long story, but we won't get into All that. Right, make it short. Uh, I got about twenty seconds. Give us the highlights. We got the, uh, we put about um, uh, a pound of weed, uh, a couple fists of uh, VSOP Hennessy, yeah, and then we put about three thousand dollars in the casket with him to take with him up to heaven. Really? You guys got together and put $3,000 in this guy's casket before he got buried? Well, right. And the weed. Yeah, a pound of weed. And yeah, you, and, and a you're, pound of and, weed. And you're smoked, feeling... He smoked his way all the way up there, yeah. And your feeling was he would enjoy the afterlife more with these uh, materials than if you were to leave him in a barren-type casket. Exactly. Well, of course. <laughs> and now oh, you oh, really wish you had that three grand, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Hit the brake. We need to go buy some shovels. <laughs> 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 you ever heard oh, of such a thing, boy. Terry? Well, yeah. you know, people do like to be buried with things that are most important to them. So obviously the weed, the VSOP, and, see, yeah. and the... Has, has there yeah, ever come a point since this friend of yours died? I know he's a friend. This is somewhat sensitive to you. But has, has there ever been a point where you were a little short on cash that you were thinking, damn, I could really use that three <laughs> yes. grand? Yeah. <laughs> He's going, Hell yeah. Oh, my best, one of my best friends my whole life. I just sit there every once in a while and I'll be thinking of that casting in there. And right. Like, you ever go it. talk to his grave and ask for a loan? <laughs> and you, swipe, you, you swipe your card on the side of the casket. <laughs> <laughs> the side of the tombstone, money pops up. <laughs> mm. You're like, damn, only a $500 limit. <laughs> Interesting. God, they're cheap in hell, too. Yeah. <laughs> the team Mm -hmm. A couple of text pages before we uh, pack it in for the day, Terry. Oh, geez. Uh, I shouldn't have told that on there. Uh, let's see here. 9.31 and 36 seconds. Somebody writes, I will swallow Stevens man butter if Washington beats Oklahoma this Saturday. I will, too. Did you? Wow. I mean, what inspired this guy to write this? Did you go out? I know it's a guy. <laughs> what do you think? Jesus. What do you think? <laughs> it's just foregone conclusion. Do you, uh... Did you have a moment on this morning's show where you touted the Huskies' chances this weekend? No. Oh. All right, let's find out so just so no one has any illusions. Oh, I'm going guy all the way. No, I'm it's saying. guy all the way. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. Man butter. <laughs> you just wanted to say that. Can't believe it's not butter. Shocker, huh? Boy, Man butter. <laughs> Hold this guy to it. He's not putting anything up. I mean, so just, yes, we got your text. Thank you for uh, texting. We appreciate the contribution. I hope they I win think. now. They are going to win. They are going to win? Yeah. 
So you're rooting for a Husky win? What? And you're rooting for the man butter. Oh. That is Stephen Like Gilbert. a hot knife through man butter. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it's not butter. Okay. Did someone just say that? I just said it. You did? Yes. Listen. Yeah, you should listen to the program. It's catching on. Anyhow. I was trying uh, to think of what it was called, maybe. And, hmm. I just said that about a minute earlier, but that's all right. Like a whole minute? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. You, you want me to play back the tape for you? No, I believe that you okay. said it, obviously, if everybody's saying that. Okay. I don't know how I missed it. Oh, jeez. Man butter. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. 928 and 55 seconds. Somebody writes, thanks for the tip, lady. Sounds like it's a lot easier to do a dead Muslim. I can dig you up in 30 seconds. Wow. Because <laughs> nice. 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 the lady called up and said they're only buried two feet under with no embalming. Mm. All in white. So it sounds like he's got his weekend planned out now. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, T-Man, it sounds like he's got his weekend planned out now. <laughs> Did somebody say that? Oh, I can't believe it's not butter. Okay. <laughs> Is that what I sound like? I don't think I sound like that. Oh, apparently I just missed something. And okay. Now I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Obviously not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 922 and 37 seconds. We wish we could put a concrete casing around Terry's bunt. That thing's been dead for years. Oh, oh finally. Wow. Before the five kids, so I mean. Mm-hmm. That's how rich you'd be if you didn't have kids. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, let's see. They don't pour cement onto the coffins. They have a concrete top that is about eight inches thick, and it's not sealed. Everyone seems to have different opinions on this. Yeah. Uh, 9, 19, and 16 seconds, those damn concrete vaults have ruined my night on several occasions. <laughs> oh, Jesus. that's sick. 9, 19, and 16 seconds. The coffin goes inside the vault. They don't pour cement around it. Oh. The vault has a lid. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Maybe there are different variations on this. I don't ever think of that. Yeah, could be. <laughs> so. 9.19 in one second. White oh. people are freaking sick. <laughs> I think she's also, I'm assuming this one's a she, referring to the story that has been discussed now for a good half hour here. Yes. Yeah, that is a white person thing, though. Um, you know, yeah, I don't see three black dudes getting together <laughs> and digging up some girl's grave to have sex with it. No. Not even if they're uh, high. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Eh. Nine sixteen and twenty four seconds. Don't get don't get nervous about San Francisco. They'll love you. I'm very nervous, Terry. I can tell you're <laughs> shaking, man. <laughs> Stop it now. Yeah, see what else we got here. Really? We were smelling it, felt it down by. Yeah, man, it's pretty cool. Uh, let them mother effers think that Seattle doesn't do it big. We'll show those su- suckers that we... Uh, 8.54. The people in San Francisco shut their sperm bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> They're jealous of our number one football team and our number one morning show, those bitches. Well, this is well, not going to be all that warfare. Right. We're going to be on there. Yes. <laughs> We're excited to have the two... Audiences join and participate together in conversations. I mean, just think what they can add to the grave digging sex with the dead body story. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Nothing that we couldn't add. <laughs> we got it all covered here, Terry. Yes, yeah, so what's the point? Anyhow. Imagine the in studio Christmas party with the hot girls from San Francisco and the hot girls from here. Mm-hmm. Where do we have it now? <laughs> we have it in Bend, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle. <laughs> Bend over Oregon. That's right. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> hey, Timbo, we have it a bit over Oregon. You should say that. Somebody say that? <laughs> It'd be a good line. Mm. You have a fancy one line you want to give here, Stephen? <laughs> I think he turned off his mic. Yeah, he went home. He's, He's home. He's in Bend, Oregon. <laughs> He's downstairs already. Are you still with us, Stephen? Well, I mean, it happens to me on the show all the time, so I don't know why it's that big of a deal. What happens to be on the show all the well, time? Well, I mean, you say things and then other people repeat them or things like that. But I not mean, it like happens. they made it their own. I mean, you when you reiterate something, you, you give some impression that you're reiterating a comment someone made. You don't pass it off as... I mean, sometimes you miss things that I say. I mean, it doesn't happen... I, mean, I have happens. missed the thing you've said. That's absolutely not true. Since the beginning of this program. Since the beginning of today's program? I Maybe. mean, most of the things you say aren't worth acknowledging, if that's what you're saying. Oh, I recognize that, for what sure. What do you say now? But I haven't missed the thing you said, ever! Okay, awkward silence. Anyway! <laughs> I kind of liked it, though. Mm-hmm. Weird. Yes. <laughs> Nonetheless, thank you for your contributions, Stephen, even if they are completely plagiarized. Very good. And we get to see him shortly. You do? Yeah, Stephen, okay. shortly after 
He always comes down. Wow, sounds like you're looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe not. Sliding down the pole right to the garage. There it is. <laughs> the team.